So she was dual wielding? Yeah, she was dual wielding and just, just said, fuck it, fuck it, here, take the other gun. I'll just keep this one for safekeeping for some fucking reason. I don't want... Alright. That makes so... Uh, fucking God. Toss the gun out to people. Alright, then I'll press you on that. What gun? Did I hear you correctly? She threw the gun out the room. That's right. I, that's like the third time I burped tonight. And I, I'm gonna be honest, I fucking hate doing that. I know it's human nature, but I fucking hate it. It's gross. I don't mean to do it directly into the mic. I try to turn away as fast as I can. So, you know, I apologize. <laughs> That's right. After the, broker, after the broker fell to the floor, she started She started walking over. Over where exactly? In the direction of the storeroom door to where I was watching. Of course, I quickly retreated. And then... I'm sorry, wait, wait, I'm having like a stroke listening to your fucking story. Cause he said that, he said the man, wait, 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 wait. he said Wendy Bakes ran into the room and closed the door behind him, but now apparently she shot him when the door was closed and, and walked up to him and, what, what? <laughs> of course, I quickly retreated and then the girl dropped the gun through the peephole onto the floor on, my, on the side of the door. But why on earth would she do such a thing? I couldn't tell you. Perhaps she was hoping to distance herself from the murder weapon. What? She, what? She was found? What? Without thinking, I went and picked it up. What? <laughs> I suppose I was worried about just leaving it there in case any more tragedies took place. So it was you, in fact, who took the third gun from the scene of the crime? Then where is it? Alright, then I demand to bring this gun forth, since you know where it is, so we can examine it. Have a ballistic expert check. We have a ballistic expert in the fucking room, <laughs> right? With us right now, on the jury, on the fucking, in the jury, right? Come on, man. Mm. I left the cleanup to my lackeys and left. Clear up. We made a bit of a mess around the corner, so Mr. Wuss, you guys can also just chime in if you want to, Nash and fucking, what's your name, Ringo? Right? Made a bit of a mess around the counter, so Mr. Whistle, Whistle and Fluke here told us to tidy up. He thinks he's our blooming mom or something. Well, I was paying you enough, by God. Uh. Tell me, Mr. Graydon, when you left the pawnbrokery that night, was it by any chance with the second disc in your jacket pocket? You're like a bull at the... Or what the fuck is going on here? <laughs> Hello? Gentlemen! Listen, if y'all want to play rough, go do that shit once we're done, okay? You can play cops and robbers all you fucking want. Something's wrong, sunshine. Uh, that should be my line. You're choking the man out. You do realize you were just violently shaking Mr. Skulkin. Blimey. The deed's a bit of a... Oglin? Oglin? God, what the fuck? Alright, whatever. <laughs> what, what was going on just now? What was that about? You saw him. He grabbed my whistle. What? <laughs> okay. Why the blazes? He said, uh, did you mention the third gun when you got you down the state? What? Why didn't you mention the third gun when we got you down to the station? And why didn't you? Because we didn't know nothing about it. Or the flaming peephole in the door. Hmm? Sorry about that. I can't be prone to losing my rag sometimes. Not, uh, not hurt, are you? Poor Blimey. See, that's why he's looking at me. I'm telling you, he did give me the willies. Hmm, that was strange. The inspector doesn't normally get quite so worked up as that. He would normally grab someone. No, that wasn't like Gregzy at all. He normally all sweetness and light, no matter what I say to him. That's because it's you, Iris. 
That's because you're fucking basically blackmailing the guy. Yes, well, I think you might be a special case. Well, anyways, that was definitely out of character. Stop eating your food, Gregson. It makes him making me hungry. More hungry than I'm out than I'm already am, you know? What's my feeling? As much as I hate to admit it. I don't see any obvious holes in the testimony at the moment. What do you mean you don't see any obvious holes in the test? Oh my fucking god. I'm surrounded by a bunch of fucking idiots. Uh, and quickly too, because one of the uh once they discover the blood on the overcoat Gina's wearing. Yeah, because they're gonna go, yeah, she's wearing the coat, she has blood all over her, but non, none of the clothes that she's already wearing. Like, what, okay. There's so many holes in that. Anyways, it doesn't strike me as the sort of thing, the sort of thing you claim, if you hadn't genuinely seen it happen. But we know that Gina didn't shoot Mr. Winniebank, so what's going on? All I know is that it's very unfair. Why should some German scientist test a test be acceptable as evidence, but mine and Hurley's wasn't. Detectives can use test tubes too. Never mind that. I have to find the real inconsistency. And I have to find it before the prosecution discovers the bloodstain. Hmm. Okay. Still at the entrance of the shop. Through an actual counter, felt a sharp pain in my arm. I pursued the man, but he shut himself in the storeroom. I could... Why would you... Why would you chase him? What point do you have to chase him? You mean, you chased after him? I don't recall the reason why, but I ran after him to the back of the shop. Wow. You just got shot, and you say, let me run towards it. Alright, cool. And what about this peephole in the door you mentioned? Well, unsurprisingly, the storeroom doors is a solid job, made of stout wood. Okay. But there's a small opening. There's literally no reason for that fucking hole to exist on that door. Besides... <laughs> besides... Besides, like... I can't think of any actual reason why you would need that on that door. Besides it just being involved in this case. Like, what? What benefit do you get out of it? He, there's not someone working back there or anything. He works in the shop by himself, right? The door's constantly locked. It's a really tough door. Fucking no one's gonna break in there, right? If anything, you make the security of the door worse by having a little window like that. What purpose does it serve? Well, there's a small opening. Uh, it's about head height that lets you see. Uh, what's um, what's in there from the outside? Actually, I shouldn't know that, shouldn't I? I looked through it myself. Yeah, you did look through it. You saw her with the gun in her hand. And what about the Buckling Brothers? Did you see what went? <clears throat> did you see what went through the peephole as well? No, no, they didn't. I doubt these two buffoons were even aware the people exist. So the Skulkin brothers were there, but they didn't see the killing of Mr. Winniebag take place. Hmm. Inside the storeroom, I can see the brother- uh, Brothers. I can see the broker and that young girl standing there. The defendant? Yes. Thought neither of them noticed that I was looking. The girl raised her gun and pointed straight at the man. And then, what'd you see next? The accused in the black coat shot the man in the back as he was trying to flee to safety. But he was already in the room. Why, like... <sighs> yes, when the crime was discovered, the defendant was found with the gun in her hand. But that was Mr. Winniebank's gun from which only a single bullet had been fired. And as we already established, Mr. Graydon, the bullet was fired at you. Ah, but no. It wasn't the broker's gun that the pickpocket girl had with her when I saw her. Yes, the bullet from Moneybank's gun grazed my arm. And yes, the Skulkin's gun grounded the detective. But this was another gun entirely. A third gun! 
Broker's gun was not the murder weapon, so clearly there had to be a third firearm involved. In other words, the accused might have had her own gun with her, <laughs> with her at the time. But no other gun was found at the scene. Alright. Calm yourself, counsel. Sorry? You must consider the events in, the, in order. I mean, if we're considering it in order the way you described it, makes doesn't make any fucking sense. At first, I saw the broker and the girl glare at each other, and then all of a sudden, the broker turned to run. To run where? To the back of the room? It's a small ass room with nowhere to run to. And it was at that moment, the little gutter shot a uh, little gutter rat shot him in the back. A chilling image, I must say. Fuck you, Judge. Saw the blood splatter all over the wretched girl. Hold it! All over her? All over her. Everything. You say you say everything. Yes. Through the peephole, I saw it clearly. Yeah, I don't I don't even think we can I honestly think all we had to do here was just press everything he said, and then once the fucking thing comes here, we just use his statement against him, I guess. As to the people, I saw it clearly. Of course, the stains are invisible now. Uh, what with the coat being such a dark color. You are aware that she's wearing a white shirt. And you are aware that, that after her arrest, she was not given a change of clothes, right? And you also are aware that she was in that room the whole entire time and didn't leave at any point. And if she did leave at any point, why the fuck would she still have the coat on her? <sighs> I fucking hate this game. <laughs> but I assume you, the garment, is sullied with the victim's blood. Well, it's sullied with blood, that's for sure. But it's not Wendy Bang's blood, isn't it? No, that's right. It's Mr. Mason's blood, from when McGill had stabbed him two months ago. It's so annoying. If they only accept Hurley's chemical analysis. Yep, but they won't. So unfortunately, they won't, because they're all idiots. But, you know, what can you do about it? Hmm, bother. What are you, Winnie the Pooh? Oh, brother. <laughs> then she tossed the gun out the peephole, so I... Okay, what didn't I press? Black coat, pursuit the man. I didn't press what, these two? Yeah, I didn't press these two. Mr. Winnie Bank emerged from the storeroom, I believe. Ringo and Nash were scouring the scouring? Yeah, scouring the corner when he suddenly appeared and flew at them. He already had the revolver in his hand, fortunately. I wasn't too close. Never had been so scared in my life. Yeah, we're just your regular mild man of burglars, that's all. We don't do violence, says the pair who carried a gun. Alright, what do you mean when you say you were near the entrance to the shop? I was in the doorway, running my eyes over the shelves for forfeited items. Looking for the music box, of course. The broker went for Nash in the first place. And then Ringo joined in, making it two against one, so I assumed they could handle the situation. So I just stood there, like an idiot. But I was wrong. I was trying to help me bruv, but the old geezer chucked me over the bloomin' counter. So I pulled my gun on the old fella. And that soon made him scaper. Pair of you, the pair of you setting upon wow, <clears throat> pair of you setting upon the poor defenseless pawnbroker together. Shame you. To be fair, he had a gun. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, you can't call him defenseless. He had a gun. Sorry, Gov. Hold it. You mean the moment you were shot? Yes. Though I didn't immediately realize what had happened, of course. Things crashed to the floor from the counter as the three men were brawling. Oh my god, do I want to become famous? By viewers on followers and primes on yourfollows.com. Guess what? It used to be called bigfollows.com, I think, but I guess that bot got killed now. <laughs> Fuck. 
You know, you're big enough to get bots. Dude, I've been getting bots for fucking years. I hate it. <laughs> I like fucking try to get rid of them. And every time I do that, like 50 more pop up. But then I guess Twitch uh, decided to go like, you know what? It doesn't it doesn't count anymore. They finally fixed that, I guess. They're, they they know how to, you know, suss out the bots. <laughs> but then I guess that also creates a problem. Like with the other, like the last stream I did, for some reason, when you check my fucking, my VODs or whatever, it says I don't got any views on it, which I'm like, that's a fucking lie, but okay, because, you know, Sushi raided me in the middle of it, so... Fuck you, Twitch. <laughs> it's kind of like how YouTube start, started out of nowhere deleting comments off of my videos. I don't know why the, I don't know what the fuck is wrong with all this dumb shit. I hate it. They just trying to keep the little man down. <laughs> All right, things crashed to the floor from the counter as the three men were brawling. You know, I told them they should play Melee instead, but then they said, no, sir, we like to take showers. So they all were playing Brawl instead. And you know what? I can appreciate them because at least I don't have to be surrounded by a bunch of stinky people who don't know how to take showers. <laughs> yes, that was me making fun of the Melee community. There you go. Wash your fucking ass. <laughs> So unnecessary. Anyways. <clears throat> it was... That's so fucked up. Anyways. It was exactly the moment that it happened, so I did hear the gunshot. And the bullet went on to strike the calendar in the wall behind you. So it would appear. When I looked at my arm, I saw it was bleeding badly, so I wrapped, up my, I wrapped my handkerchief around it. Seeing as I couldn't explain what happened to the doctor... Wait, what? To a doctor, I had no choice but to wait for it to heal a bit. Smash Community is a joke anyway. Most of them are. I'm not gonna say all of them are, most of them are. I mean, there was definitely a, um, they're out of business now, I guess, because of COVID and shit, but there was definitely like a, uh, like a, like a, uh, card shop that I would go to to, like, play D&D &D and shit, right? And once you walked in, it was just a bunch of Smash players there, and, like, also, like, one of the Smash players that was there was uh, New York's number one Falco, right? Or whatever the fuck. So, they would all play there, too, and they would they would hold their fucking <laughs> GameCube controllers like it's a fight stick. And it's like, listen, do what makes you happy, right? You're not hurting nobody. You know, except when you hurt my nose because you don't know how to wash your ass. But, um... To be fair, that room wasn't that smelly though. It wasn't. It wasn't bad. I've been. I've been worse places with Smash players. That room wasn't that bad. Like maybe once in a while you would smell someone, right? Like one person. But um, you know, fucking like every time I turn my eyes and I just see them holding the fucking controller like it's a fight stick, but it's a GameCube controller. I'm just like, I'm like, I can't. I can't. I can't take that seriously. I fucking can't. Stop holding the controller like that. You're freaking me out. <laughs> Try to get a dude thrown out for cheating because he has his GF with him. Oh my god. That, yeah, no. Don't, don't forget, Smash players, Smash community is also the people who threw a crab at fucking, what's his name, Hungrybox? <laughs> threw a crab at him. Like, why? <laughs> I didn't imagine it would still be bleeding two days later. Did Mr. Moneybanks intend to shoot you? Do you think? Yes. Well, now, I don't imagine he even noticed I was there, to be honest. Perhaps the gun went off accidentally. Anyways, it did quite a, uh, it did, qu it did quite strike home. When I pulled me gun on him, he tried to shove me out the way. And then he, and then he scapered through the door out back. At which point, what did you do? Okay, so all I had to do was press there. All right, cool. My lord, me lord. Every time I hear my lord, I think about the little imp motherfucker from Inuyasha. I can't remember his name, but every time he walks up, he's like, Me lord Shishomaru! And I'm like, I love him. Because <laughs> he's stupid. And I love him. Me lord Shishomaru. <laughs> Shishomaru's cool until the later parts of Inuyasha where he gets all twilight on you and he's trying to, you know, do the Jason thing with the, with, with the, with the underage child. <laughs> Requesting your lordship permission to enter... <laughs> Fuck. Requesting your lordship's permission to interrupt the cross-examination. 
Explain yourself, officer. I have the results of the test that was ordered earlier, my lord. Me, lord? Ah, the blood of the accused coat. Mm-hmm. Thank you, officer. Very well, the cross-examination is hereby temporarily suspended. Temporarily. Remember that. Temporarily. It's still ongoing. So you can't come to a verdict. Not yet. Mm -mm. Can't do it. I presume you have no objection, Cancel? No, my lord. Read it, Gregson. Well, there you have it. The report, please, Inspector. Yes, sir. Traces of human blood were found on the overcoat of the defendant, Miss Gina Lestrade. From the extent of the stains, it would appear that they were the results of splattering following a gunshot wound. Is that what it says on the fucking thing? Are you kidding me? End of report. It says on the report that it was the result of a gunshot wound? Now that's complete bullshit, but okay. See, what did I tell you? No. The blood on the coat is not Mr. Wendy Banks. What on earth makes you say that, Counsel? The coat originally belonged to Ms. Uh, Magnus McGilded. Just before his coat was deposited at Wendy Banks, McGilded had fatally stabbed Mr. Mason. So the blood on the overcoat is the blood of the brickmaker from the omnibus case. Objection. Well, the dead cannot speak. Isn't that right, my Nipponese friend? Sorry? Two months ago, in this very courtroom, did you not argue uh, fervor- I can't say the word. Fervor- fer fervently? Fuck. Fervently? I Damn it! I hate my life. Did you not argue for Mr. McGilda's innocence? And yet, now that the man is dead, you brand him murderer, we went over this already, Zykes. Don't bring it up again, we went over this already. This is accepted fact. We all agreed to this. Your conduct shatters any shreds of respect you may have earned for yourself in this country. You're all racist anyways. But that was... I call it bully disgrace, treachery, that's what it is. Hmm, how to determine whether the blood on the coat is two months old or not? Even a stereoscopic couldn't help the answer that problem. But... We use Mr. Sloan specifically. Mr. Sloan is a detective, not a chemist. Says the doctor who thinks that he left his fucking... Left a bullet inside of his patient or some shit, you know what I mean? We put such faith in the chemical formula devised by me, for example, when I'm a communications officer. I held out pro- oh god. I can't- oh uh, damn. Protsky? Is that how you pronounce that? To starving boy? Oh, Perotsky. Oh, 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 like the- okay, the food. Yeah, okay. I can't say it, but I know what he's talking about. Starving boy and he ran away crying. That, he just brought up like a random memory he had, by the way. <laughs> Her like Shlums is barely more than a... Oh wait, no, he's talking about Shlums. Yeah, he handed him food and he ran away. Maybe because he saw a criminal? Uh, Shlums is barely more than a figment of the pol of public's imagination. His name carries no weight in the courtroom. No weight at all. How could you say that? Victory is sweet indeed. This proves that my testimony is the whole truth from start to finish. How did you arrive at such a conclusion, sir? As the witness says, the accused coat was spattered with blood. Uh, the only way Mr. Graydon could possibly have known the fact is if he saw it happen. Bro, I was saying Herlock isn't even a real person. <laughs> Why his surgeon is in the jury? I don't know. The people in the jury is like... First of all, one of the people in the jury is not even from the fucking country. <laughs> like, fucking what? He's a visitor, right? So, there's it, already a fucking house full of clowns, right? And the surgeon fucking sitting there wondering if he left the scalpel, inside, the scalpel inside of his fucking patient, right? 
the maid has proven to be just like just just hate poor people <laughs> right just the worst people out here you know Von Zykes is just super racist he admitted to it in other words his testimony is solid and the conclusion is singular it was the accused who shot the victim in the case and that is the whole truth you guys are fucking my lord been a long battle since- Oh, fuck you guys. Nah, -uh, you can't do this. No, 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 no. Don't you- No, shut up, jury. I'm still in the middle of my cross-examination. You have no right to do this. Been a long battle, this one. But this old war horse has something to say. Now, if you please. Mr. Foreman. As of this moment, sir, the squadron has reached its final decision. Ready, men. All for one, now. Guilty. 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 <laughs> Say guilty all you want. You can't do it. You can't do it. I'm still in the middle of my cross examination. You can't do it. Unlawful. Well, it appeared, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, have reached a, una a unanimous verdict. The defense has consistently failed to uppick this witness testimony. Your attorney attempts you may make to unpick the juror's decision being equally successful. Iris, say something. Help me. I don't believe it. After I come so far. How's this all unraveling on me so fast? How very dist uh, I, I, I lost my, I lost my ability to read. I'm sorry. Wow, how very distressing. To be held in such low esteem. And who said that? Wouldn't you agree, Mr. Narahodo? I'm sorry. Who are you? Officer? You deliver the report now? That will be all. Thank you. It occurred to me with some regularity, Mr. Narahodo, that scientific truths are determined not by science, but another, but none other than the human mind. Is it really Herlock? Did he really just sneak in? I mean, there's really no reason for him to sneak in, but okay. I know that voice. Am I going mad? Hey, there he is. Mr. Sloans. What? What's the meaning of this? What's the meaning of this? I'll tell you. It's padding. It's padding to fucking make this game longer than it has to be. <laughs> what business do you have here, detective? The last I heard, you were recuperating in the hospital. As well as I... <laughs> As well as I would be, had I not been set upon an errand. To be honest, I'm gonna be honest right here, I didn't think it would be Herlock. I really didn't. <laughs> right? I don't know who was I, I don't know who I was expecting or anything. Actually, you know who I was expecting? Actually, I was expecting uh, Hisonica, uh, Hisonica to make another, another appearance. Because he's been gone since the first trial right like he left I think he just straight up left and probably went back to Japan or something Hurley is that really you you're awake at last yes good day Iris I appear to be rather late to, ri uh, to rise my apologies so what what do you got for me slums are you coming in here just to go like by the way i have my uh my certificate from my chemist class or whatever i am now officially a scientist <laughs> now my lord if you will humor me yes and what matter i have something of great importance i wish to give to the young lawyer over there i need no more than five minutes would you be so kind spare you got it. fuck go ahead what say you to this, Lord Von Zykes? 
This trial has taken many hours of the fuck you of the court's time. What about my time? I took two streams. Two whole ass streams, man. Exactly. It's been long enough. We don't want to <laughs> go waste any more precious time. I'm hungry as hell, dude. As I was saying, having spent so long already, it would seem... Uh, Trulish? Kurdish? Cur Churlish? I've never used that word in my life. To deny the defense of mere five minutes. My stomach literally just growled. Very well then, counsel. You have five minutes. Fuck your five minutes. I was in the middle of my fucking cross-examination. My dear fellow, I apologize for my tardy arrival. Fuck you. Mr. Slums, are you alright now? Alright. <laughs> I'm all wrong. Sorry. I've only just managed to summon the strength to stand, man. I asked the judge for- That's a fucking lie. You just said you went on a fucking task. You went on a mission. And you walked your ass all the way over here. Fucking liar. But I fear even that may prove to be too much for me. Pray forgive me. Or should I pass out? Let me make this, this let me make this discussion as short as possible then. Apparently, this place is full of idiots. Oh, you just realized that, Iris. None of them can see how wonderful your chemical blood analysis is. Ah, oh, well. That concoction of mine was really just a bit of sport to assist me in my investigations. Wait, so Shlom's did the report? I think he just came and delivered the report. But it'll be really funny if he fucking... If... Shlom's not from... No, Schlom's not from Germany. Yeah, no, he's not of German descent. I don't think. I don't think he's from. I don't think they ever like said he's from Germany in this game, right? Yeah, no. I think he's born and raised here. Um, I say here like like it's fucking real. In London, right? Grusky literally wrote the most incriminating shit on the report. <laughs> ah, the splatter came from a gun wound. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> I never took ter uh, I never took trouble to refine it for appraisal by the scientific community. An oversight on my part. Right, modesty, surely not. But enough of that. I'm here to give you this, my dear fellow. What is that? A lavender fur fur shoot. Mm. Is that from uh? Is this from uh Susato? A leaving present from Miss Susato. From Mrs. Sato. Okay. From Mikotoba. If possible, matters were to be settled without me giving you this. Those were her instructions when she asked me to do this. Okay. I don't understand. Mrs. Sato foresaw today's events, I believe. She knew that the culprit would attempt to escape justice by means both devious and underhand. And that you, Mr. Narhodo, fighting fairly as you are won't to do, won't to do, as you are won't to do, okay, would find yourself in considerable peril. At the very moment of crisis, you were to be given this small parcel. Those who the dear those were the dear lady's instructions. So why the fuck didn't she just give it to me? Huh? What the hell is this now? Is this the trap door maker? Oh. This is the machine I made. Not the trap door, the cat door maker, or whatever the fuck it's called. You know what I mean? I'm sorry, how the fuck? I'm just trying to guess right now. Like, I mean, they can. I mean, I'm assuming Sasato is the ancestor of the Fey family, right? I'm assuming, right? Because she's a fucking Shrine Maiden. But, um. Like, how does someone just sit there, look at the whole trial, like, look, look at all the evidence that she doesn't even know fully about, right? And just goes, oh yeah, he's gonna fuck this up. Don't worry, I got this. Here you go, just give that to him. And it's a fucking cat door maker. 
Look, I use this. It's my latest invention. What is that? I call it the Cat flap -a mat It can make a cat flap for a little furry friends like Waggy in seconds. Wait, Susie, uh, wait. What's Susie's up to? Mr. Sato mur muttered the following words before she left. I'm a failure. I don't deserve to be a judicial assistant. I'm sorry? Those weren't the words I, were, I was expecting. And why is that? What? Didn't she say something like that? You really are the best judicial assistant in the world. Well, that's extremely flattering. But I'm sorry to say... That I've been a complete failure. She did say that. What does she mean by that, Mr. Slums? That night, when you left Wendy Banks in pursuit of the thieves... Mr. Sato made us use this contraption for a certain purpose. This is your answer, dear fellow. Not at all cryptic, then. Okay. Mr. Sato used this cat flap -a mat at that night. But why? No fucking way. Are you serious? Are you fucking serious? Are you fucking serious? The whole entire time, when I sat here and I was like, why the fuck? <laughs> Why would you have a, a window up there in the door for no fucking reason? It's useless. Now I'm looking at the thing. Look at the fucking door. 30 minutes later, suddenly there's a window there. Why? <laughs> What the fuck? This is dumb. This has gone into stupid territory. This is some 8 million IQ bullshit going on here. Alright. Your five minutes is over. Fuck you. We're out of time already? I'm grateful for you affording us in the brief recess, Mr. Reaper. And they sneaked that shit in there. They honestly, they did. They did. And as I'm, as I'm looking at this whole entire case, in the back of my mind, I'm like, this door is the most useless shit. And then as we're going through it, I'm like, this door hasn't been important not once. And then they just bring it up at the end of the fucking thing. Fucking what's his name? Uh... Fucking, I already forgot the dude's name. This is not Egbert. It's, you know, Chad Wellington looking motherfucker. Melverton or whatever the hell his name is. He brings it up and I'm like, oh, is that why we're using the door now? Okay. Well, at least it has a role to play now. And they're like, nah, man, the door is a lie. <laughs> what? Okay. I need to thank detective. I'm like, I'm surprised that my mind just instantly went, how the fuck is this useful? And then I just went, Wait a minute, give me those fucking pictures again. Are you fucking hitting me? The die is cast. Fuck you. I hate this game. Is it really? The jurors are unanimous in their learnings. No doubt my learned friend will consider a summation examination. But any attempt to alter the verdict now would be utterly fruitful. A uh, fruitless, fruit, fruitile. Fuck. <laughs> I wonder. Mr. Narahoda. Yes. The rest is down to you, dear fellow. What is your plan? I don't know, die. 
course, it's down to me. I need to be careful here. If I make the wrong move, the trial will end badly. My lord, the defense requests further cross-examination. Fuck you! They made a choice in the middle of my examination. They're not allowed to do that. God, Chekhov's having a fucking field day. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> the jurors have spoken. Protocol takes that you may not cross-examine any new witnesses. Objection. Fuck you, I was in the middle of my shit. The defense is not asking for a cross-examination of a new witness. Rather, to continue with the one that was existing. What? It would appear that a rather important detail has escaped your attention, Mr. Reaper. My lord. Requesting your lordship's permission to interrupt the cross-examination. Thank you, officer. Very well. The cross-examination hereby is temporarily suspended. I presume you have no objection, counsel? Hmm. No, my lord. So nobody can say anything then. Nobody can't tell me nothing, all right? Bruno asked to resume his cross-examination of Mr. Gra uh, Graydon. The court is obliged to follow. Oh, but you're not gonna take the word of the great detective, right? You know, he's not, he's not truly a detective. Whatever. I remind those present that this is my courtroom. I concur that the defense is entirely within his rights to request the continuation of the cross-examination. However, I will not permit any un, uh, un fuck, I can't say the word, un, unremitting, I can't say it, fuck me. <laughs> uh, keep going. Therefore, I have decided to afford the defense one final opportunity to conclude the cross-examination. Oh, because you fucked me over, judge? All right, great. But if Zykes acts, I bet you give him fucking an hour to do it, right? Whatever. Counsel, you must choose but one statement from the- Oh, shit. You <laughs> hit my microphone. That's how angry I am. And but one piece of evidence to present. Yeah, okay. Alright, single chance to present evidence. Well, that seems like a fuck you to me, so I'm just gonna... Just gonna... Do this real quick. Yep. Because opportunity comes once in a lifetime. <laughs> if following that, the situation remains unchanged, I shall move to adjudication. Is it clear, counsel? You will not press the witness any further. My lord. My lord. Hmm. A single statement and a single piece of evidence. Most generous. Well then, Mr. Narahodo, it's high time I... Are we not gonna lock him up for inter for impersonating an officer, by the way? Just in the courthouse? We're just gonna let that slide? Okay. <laughs> just, alright. That's not a felon or anything. <laughs> well then, Mr. Nahoto, it's high time I, I fell in the dead of fate. I leave this in your capable hands. He fainted, he's fine, don't worry. Alright. <clears throat> Either the man has extraordinary strength of mind, or extraordinary lack of feeling. I imagine he's feeling very little now. The detective is sleeping soundly in one of his antechambers. He ragged up. I love how he's like, it's time for me to faint. Oh, and just fucking exaggerated the shit out of it. Strike a man when he's down, why don't you? It's Zykes we're talking about. Makes you go as zoinks. Well then, counsel, are you fully prepared? Yeah, I guess. Maybe. A little bit. Yes. One statement, one piece of evidence. I won't let Mr. Slums down, or Iris. What about Gina? What about the ones who whose fucking neck is on the on the chopping block? 
and won't waste the final chance that Sasato has given me. This is going to decide the entire outcome of the trial. Very well then, under the terms I have outlined, you may resume the cross-examination. <laughs> Don't ever make me a lawyer. <laughs> no one ever make me a lawyer, okay? I would disrespect the fucking judge so hard. Most judges have like a fucking power trip going on, you know what I mean? Did you sneeze in my court? I'll fucking hold you in contempt. Like, all right, calm down. You got a hammer. All right. <clears throat> now, here's the thing. First of all, I gotta check the fucking evidence myself. Just make sure there's no like extra thing to talk about, about or anything, right? Hmm. Ew, they're vicious teeth. Look like they can rip through almost anything. They're good, aren't they? Okay. Rotates ten times per second, then it gets through any kind of door, no matter what. Blah blah. Two parts up there. Ah, it's for attaching the hinges, the door. It cuts it right out. Okay, of course. Nothing can match the machine for power. You make bench meat. Blah blah blah. Mhm. Mm Sounds so charming and friendly when you say it. <laughs> It's like reality of Cap Flapomatic is that it's a grim weapon of door destruction. My guy is adorable, so nothing I wouldn't do for him. Even develop deadly weapons. You need help, little child. Alright, just make sure there's no extra shit there. So, am I supposed to fucking like. Now I'm at a. Now I'm at. Mm, I guess. Here's the thing. Part of me wants to go like, will you show the photo, right? Because that's the actual evidence to show that the thing is in the door. But I'm assuming, obviously, since we got this, we have to show this. So, ruffians, when he makes, went over the counter. Pursued the man, showed himself in the storeroom. I could see him through the peephole in the door, though. All right. I mean, to be fair, if you also want to, you know. If you also want to talk about it, right, you can be like, what people through the door? You mean the one that didn't exist in this photo over here? You can use any of those three, really, but I feel like they want me to use this, so I'm going to use this. Objection. It's not really, I mean, it's like my, here's the thing. I always do this a lot in half of the fucking mystery games that I do. I overthink a lot of shit, right? Because I overanalyze it. So in my mind, it's like, it's like, he's like, I looked through the door as it was happening. And since we know, since we've already established that the door was locked and, um, and that, you know, the uh, whole incident took place like, what, a total of like maybe five, ten minutes, whatever, you know, whatever. It took like a pretty short time in between intervals of the, of the pictures or whatever. You can either show them the picture where the where the fucking cat doorway doesn't exist, the cat door doesn't exist on the door, or you can show them the picture where it does exist, you can show them both of them, or you can show them the contraption, and they'd be like, what the fuck is that? Explain. Instead of just taking the easy route and saying, look, that window didn't, it didn't exist at the moment in time, right? I think the picture itself is already self-explanatory, but, you know, instead we're going to take this funky contraption out. <laughs> And just go, check this out. Now let me spend another 30 minutes explaining what the hell this thing does. What on earth is this eccentric contraption, Council? Oh, it's a cat flap matic my lord. It makes, a, it makes a way for cats to get in and out of the room. But not dogs. Fuck dogs. As I say that, I turn and look at my dog and he's looking at me. You can cut through any door you can think of and make a nice little door in the middle of it. That's right, my lord. It's a device for creating a so-called cat flaps. Small doors for cats to come come and go as they please without their owners having... I'm sure we can talk all about that uh, for ourselves. Hmm? But that cat-loving contrivance has no possible relevance to this case. Oh, really? Of course it doesn't. To start with, there's no cat flap in the pawnbroker's door. 
Hmm. Not being a keeper of cats myself, I'm afraid I fail to see what this has to do with the matter at hand. Perhaps it would help if I describe the function in another way, then. This contraption is a window maker. It is able to create a peephole in any door you can imagine in practically no time at all. I beg your pardon? A peephole, you say? Two nights ago, we arrived at the scene only minutes after the murder of Mr. Win Wait a minute. How long did... Wait. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, hold up. Wait, okay. For forget all this for a second, real quick. All right. I just want. I just want to say. I just want to point this out because now I'm. Now I'm. Now my mind's still racing. So what you're telling me will happen is that we went in. We went in the fucking store. We saw two figures, which are fucking Mario and Luigi hanging out there. They shoot at Holmes. Right. Holmes gets shot. I keep calling the Holmes, but whatever. Holmes gets shot. Then he's lying in Mikotoba's arms and he's all like, Ryunosuke, quick, fucking chase the people who shot me even though you don't got a gun to defend yourself and they'd probably have like five more bullets in the chamber. And then he goes, sure thing, buddy. And then fucking runs out and chases two people with a gun by his lonesome in the middle of the night. And then as this happens, Mikotoba, because we know that Iris didn't come downstairs. She didn't know what the fuck happened, right? Because she wasn't there. So as this happened, Mikotoba goes, all right, I see that you're probably bleeding out or something and you need fucking medical attention, but I'll be right back. I got to find out what's in that door. So she just drops his head on the floor, runs upstairs, grabs the fucking contraption because I highly doubt she was carrying it with her, runs back down and goes, all right, let me just make a little, let me make a little door here. See what's in there. Oh, okay. All right, cool. <laughs> right. And then comes back and goes, let me just make sure Holmes is still alive. Also, imagine the dust that thing kicks up. Forget the dust. Imagine the fuck, like, she said it makes a cat door in, like, what, 10 seconds by having blades go fucking 10 times as fast or some bullshit. Just using the thing for, like, a quick 10 seconds, you're just hearing mur, 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 in the middle of the night. <laughs> it's gotta be loud as fuck. All right. We arrive at the scene only minutes after the murder of Mr. Winnie Banks has taken place. That's right. According to the paperwork at the yard, it was you, you Japanese, your Japanese citizens in slums. Yes. Yes, the three of us were together. And by the way, at what point are you going to fucking tell me what does this manuscript have to do with any of this shit? <laughs> Anyways, yes, the three of us were together and it recently comes to my attention that my assistant made use of this device at the time. Your assistant did what now? Mr. Narahodo, if I may say, your assistant is into some kinky shit. <laughs> there was a people in the storeroom door. I can attest to that. Imagine I looked through the people myself in order to see... Uh, ima I didn't even say, The word didn't even say imagine. I just tucked that out my ass. Because I looked through the people myself in order to see inside the locked storeroom. This is ludicrous. And that is Usher. And that's Justin Bieber. <laughs> uh, what is it you're trying to say? Of course, there's a peephole in the door. I said as much in my testimony. How else could I have witnessed the crime? For Pete's, for pity's sake. Pity's sake, Pete's sake, whatever. I got... Oh my god, what? Is, is, this, a, is this another fucking bot? Alright, you're lucky today. Our team's giving away a promo code for 10 viewers for a whole day. What the fuck? <laughs> what? Uh, it's a code. Come visit uh, at Get Viewers Pro and we will take you to the top of Olympus on Twitch. First of all, I don't want to be. Listen, would I like to make a little money as a streamer? Sure, why not? I mean, who wouldn't, right? But I don't want to be at the top of Twitch with fucking Ninja and all these other weirdos that that have like gamer quotes on fucking Twitter and shit. <laughs> like, I don't need to be up there with those losers. Uh, we provide with viewers and subscriptions on YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, and more. We have, have a good broadcast. How about you fuck off? <laughs> How about that? Yes. How could you? What? 
Council, kindly say what you mean. All right, it's time. Do -do 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 Strike the final blow. Being a gamer is my lifestyle. Your lifestyle will determine your death style. <laughs> I want to know what my death style is. <laughs> Sounds pretty cool. I'm a death bender. What I mean is this, my lord. My assistant made the peephole in the storeroom door until such time as she did. The door had no hole to look through. That was really exaggerated. Objection. This is a farce. Are you really suggesting that the peephole in the door was? Yes. It was created only after the incident had taken place by my judicial assistant using this device. Your assistant tampered with the crime scene whilst being fully aware of the of the gravity of her actions. And then she fled the fucking country. Let's go. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's why. Okay. Is her father really ill though? I mean she did get the telegram, but I mean that that was that was clutch, right? His most serious act of vandalism. For which I humbly apologize, my lord. It was in a few minutes that I fled the scene in order to pursue the Skulkin brothers and alert the police. Nevertheless, in the light of this new information, it became apparent that Mr. Graydon's testimony is riddled with holes. Well, that's why she says she's a failure. Yeah, I definitely see that now. But I mean, I highly doubt I highly doubt that that her father being sick is a lie, right? Like I'm pretty sure that's actually the truth and she would have stayed if she could. But um just imagine how kind of G that is though. She's like, "Yeah, that's right. I fucked up the crime scene and then I fled the fucking country." <laughs> I'm gone. Riddle with. Explain yourself, Council. It's been riddled with. I've been explaining myself. You guys just don't like to listen to me. The majority of Mr. Mr. Graydon's testimony that appears to incriminate the defense is based on, on what he witnessed through the peephole in the storeroom door. Yes, that filthy girl shooting the man in the back. However, if I had time, uh, if at the time of the incident, the people did not exist in the door. There's no possible way that you could see what you claim to have seen. In short, your entire testimony is a pack of lies. Order. Is there any credence to the revelation? Objection. None whatsoever, as my learned friend must surely realize. Exactly. It's just some cheap trick designed to discredit me. I'm afraid not, sir. Of course it is. Do you seriously expect people to believe that that playing... You know what I really like about this, by the way? I just want to point it out. You know whenever you're watching a show and there's that one dumb, stupid moment where a character goes, Oh, but I actually did this when you weren't paying attention. And if you go back and watch the scene... Like, it doesn't make sense because the character doesn't do anything, right? This, this makes sense. Because <laughs> the fucking answer is staring at you in the face the whole entire time. <laughs> but nobody realizes it. <laughs> like, you know? Like, fucking Jesus. Like, I always hate when they did that. If a character goes, I did this thing when you weren't paying attention, but if you go back and you watch whatever episode or read whatever moment in the book or whatever the fuck, and there's nothing to allude to that, like, then it's just, then it's just a complete ass pull, right? But they don't do that, which I really appreciate. It's very subtle. Of course it is. Do you seriously expect people to believe that... Um, that plaything can cut through a solid wood door. I mean, I can use it right now in court. Oh, yes. I designed it very powerful. To be very powerful. It can cut through even the toughest of doors. Hmm. There's a door behind you. Let's see if it can. Exactly. Just start fucking putting it on the wall. It's absurd. I had to believe it for a second. Don't believe it for a second. I had a feeling you say that. 
What? Waggy, Cooey, time for dinner. You already made one when no one was looking? Isn't that thing supposed to be like super loud? Also, why is the cat here? Did the cat, wait, what? Well? Huh? Young lady, this is the old Bailey. Do not make cat flaps in the oak planking of the Bailey. Forget the cat flaps. How did you how did you call the cap all the cat all the way down to the fucking to the goddamn courtroom? <laughs> I'm not done yet. Don't worry. This doesn't mean that the people in the storeroom door at Winnie Banks was made by your machine. There's no way you can prove that it was. No, but it's easy. What? The cat flap. My cap. Uh, my cap. Oh, fuck. The cat flaps my cat flap flap a mat creates I want to kill myself <laughs> creates are all fixed sized and the dimensions of the peephole and the bling banks are exact match hmm? oh crap oh silky's lost for words exactly excellent work iris thank you and now it's my learned friend's turn to be lost for words I feel hmm I believe your judicial assistant has already left the country for your eastern, for your Easter Island home. Well, yeah, that's true. Then you may have some diff difficult, mm, may have some difficulty in establishing all the facts. For the sake of the argument, let's assume that the people had dimensions that were perfectly that would perfectly fit this contraption. In that case, when was the people cut? The prosecution demands proof of your answer. Huh? What's the purpose of line of inquiry, Lord Von Zykes? It's very simple, my lord. The defense argues that the people was created after the incident using this device. But now that the proprietor has returned to her native land, she cannot testify. Did I read that right? Proprietor. Perpetrator. My bad. Uh, <laughs> she cannot testify to the fact. There's no proof. Okay. For as long as the fence remains unable to prove when the when the peephole was made, my learned friend claims amounts to nothing more than baseless conjecture or accusation, or whatever the hell you want to call it. I've been doing this for like almost five hours now. Can't you tell that I'm a little tired? <laughs> Indeed, it is so, Lord Von Zykes. Well, counsel, I am... Um, don't give up now, Runo. Oh, trust me, I won't. I have no choice but to keep going. I gotta keep going until this fucking game gets finished. This is time to create your own opening and force your way through. I don't know if I can do this, but I do know one thing. Sato-san is the greatest judicial assistant in the world. I mean, I don't know. Right? She can't commune with the dead, <laughs> so... <laughs> Yeah, no. Very well. The counsel for the defense will present evidence to the court uh, to support the claim. Prove that the people was made sort of after the events and not before. Okay. That's mm. the people created after the events and not before. I mean, I guess I show this one, right? It's the closest one. She almost yanked the- she almost tanked the case. I almost tanked the case by, you know, discrediting our fucking previous testimony. Take that! What are you- A print from the detective's infernal cameras again. Oh, now they're infernal! But you're the one who brought these prints to us! This is your evidence that you brought- f f Shut up! <laughs> I hate you! My judicial assistant, Mrs. Sato Mikotoba. I fucking love saying her name. God damn it, Mikotoba. It's fun to say. Is an extremely intelligent and capable woman. An intelligent woman? <laughs> in this day and age in London? No way. <laughs> Which is why I never had any cause to doubt. That's why she could have, um, what? Oh. I fucking lost, I lost my ability to read. I'm so sorry. 
that she would have considered the scenario and made sure I had the necessary proof. And the necessary proof is this photographic print, Council. It is. This print shows the scene in the shot moments after the defendant entered the premises. Agreed. Agreed indeed. It also shows the accused mercilessly wielding a gun in the direction of the defenseless broker. But more to the point. It pictures the storeroom door in the background. Let me see the print again. I don't believe it. This is quite remarkable. The door to the storeroom is completely devoid of peephole of any description. Mr. Graydon? You couldn't possibly have witnessed the crime as you claim to have done. Also, I want to go back to like way earlier in the fucking in the goddamn trial when I went like, why would she lock the door but not lock the peephole? <laughs> right? That makes no sense. Because at the time it happened, there was no peephole in the door. In other words, your testimony is a is a catalog of lies. I fucking ruined it. <laughs> Let's finish this fucking trial so I can so we can finish this game so I can move on to whatever next bullshit stream I gotta do. <laughs> I'm satisfied that the defense has, substantial, has substantiated its claims beyond all reasonable doubt. This witness testimony was entirely false. Fal I can't even say the word. False issues or some other fuck. I don't know. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done now. It's not the only thing we we now know beyond all reasonable doubt. My alert friend's assistant guilt can no longer be denied. The woman tampered with the crime scene. The woman's out of the fucking country, bro. She's not coming back. But more importantly, good lord, there's more, Lord Von Zyx. The defense may have established a reprehensible instance of perjury. Yeah, okay. But that is no proof that this man is the victim's killer. Oh my god, how many times are you guys gonna say this is the last this is the last time? <laughs> yes, that's right. What? I was right there at the scene, it's true. And I was shot in the arm, it's true. But that's all. Yes, in fact, if you look at the circumstances, I am the victim here. Alright. No, oh, please. God. I don't believe this. But they're right, as it stands now. I don't have any definite proof that he is the culprit. Still, he can't warm his way out of this one now. Iris? You know what they say. There's no point in locking the cat's door after the cat has bolted. Isn't that right, Reno? Hmm? As Hurley always says, one lie begets another. No, wait. That might have been a line I wrote for him in one of my stories. Well, no matter who said it first, you're right. Mr. Graydon, not only did you give false testimony to the court, but the lies you told make no sense. Make no sense? What do you mean by such a remark? What you said in your testimony reveals that you know something you shouldn't have known. In other words, there's a fundamental inconsistency in your statements. What? Objection. This is pro. This is prov. Look out. Prov. Provocal. Prov. I can't even fucking. Damn it! Kill me. Provocative. Provocative. Provocado. Oh fuck! Whatever. Man. Whatever. I don't care. Would you enlighten the court? Explain the alleged inconsistency. Can you tell that I'm just giving up now? <laughs> I was just right. One lie begets another. The inconsistency is revealed by the lies in the witness statements. They show that Mr. Gregson has knowledge of something he shouldn't have known uh, anything about. Namely, 
the blood stain on the coat. If you didn't see the murder, how would you know she's covered in blood? Blood stains that are present on Miss Lestrade's coat. That's right. The victim's blood splattered all over her when she shot him. But how could you possibly have known that? Obviously, because I saw her do it right there through the people and the... Uh, uh. The point is not that you lied in your testimony, Mr. Graydon. It's the nature of the lie you concocted that is so revealing. You're not making any sense. I'm making more sense than your fucking testimony. Then let me ask you a simple question. How is it, Mr. Graydon, that you knew of the existence of the peephole in the storeroom door? What? Well, obviously, I... Huh? Has the cat got your tongue, witness? The peephole in the door was made after the incident occurred. And once I entered... Uh, once I wow, once I returned to the shop, having failed to catch the two burglars, Scotland Yard's investigator arrived immediately. Since that time, the police have been at Windy Bates consistently, carrying out their investigation. Consistently, constantly, same same difference. Fuck you. <laughs> Isn't that right, Inspector Rexon? Hmm. Well, yes, of course. The place is chock full of pawn articles, and my lads have to thoroughly examine them all. So I gave the order to the officers working around the clock and the shift so we can get through it all. And consequently, there's no way that you, Mr. Gar... Wow, I was about to call him Mr. Garadeb for some reason. Mr. Graydon could have, could have gained access to the shop. Therefore, you should have known nothing about the people in the storeroom door. So the fact that it exists... Uh, the fact that it exists forms bias of your testimony is completely inexplicable. Oh god, I kill, kill me. Objection. <laughs> and yet, I've been doing this for five hours, fucking god. And yet, the fact remains that Mr. Graydon did maintain that he witnessed the crime take place through the people in the door. How on earth is that possible? Hmm? Could I have word, please, Lord Von Zykes? Speak, Inspector. It's just that I really ought to be getting back to the station now to put in my report. There's really nothing more I can add to this testimony, so, if it's all the same to you. Permission denied. <laughs> it's not all the same to me, Inspector. Not at all. You will remain exactly where you are until this trial concludes. Of course, sir. Mr. Graydon. Shouldn't have known about the existence of the peephole. Which can only mean that you must have been informed about it by somebody else. What is the basis for this, by the way? Because fucking, he's like, he's all like, I want to point out something that happened earlier in the trial, which kind of is an inconsistency with this writing right here. And it's fucking, it's the fact that he gets subpoenaed, gets brought down here, and when he enters the courtroom, the judge says, I assume you've been brought up to speed on what we, what we have talked to in court. And he goes, yes, I have. And at that time already, we've discussed the existence of the peephole because uh, we have the, what you call it? We have the fucking, um, we have this, right? This was something that, that, you know, we had to, like, talk about or whatever. And we brought up the people. I think we brought up the people. Actually, no, now that I think about it, I think we only brought up the locked door. Hmm. Okay, I guess we never really talked about the people until afterwards. Alright, never mind. Just thinking too much, like always. Stop there, my learned friend. You realize, I trust, 
that the words you just uttered have extremely serious implications. Are we going to say that Gregson's the one that tipped them off? Yes. But the defense believes that the details about the case that Mr. Graydon claims to have seen must have been revealed to him by a certain person before his testimony. And in fact, considering a peculiar clue we have, there's really only one person that could be. Who's the person in question, counsel? Oh, shit. Oh, no. Oh, no. I mean... It can only be Gregson, right? I'm gonna give him Gregson. The truth is... It can only have been you, Inspector Gregson. Eh? Me? Objection. You had better have some proof to substantiate such a rash claim, my learned friend. Consider the fact that we have only been aware of Mr. Ashley, uh, fuck, Mr. Ashley's identity for the first, for first, for the last few hours. We learned of this only during the court of the trial today. During the court, the, uh, fuck, course of the trial today. I'm, I'm, I need sleep. <laughs> Indeed, preparations for his testimony were made with great urgency during our hour-long recess. While the police executed the subpoena and brought the man here from the communication station, and until the time Mr. Graydon, I, I'm like stuttering at his name now because I'm having a hard time. <laughs> until the time that Mr. Graydon would have had no idea, no inkling that he would suddenly be required to appear in court. Are you suggesting that until such time as he was summoned? Yes, my lord. Until then, it is reasonable to assume he knew nothing of the people. It was only once Mr. Graydon was in the stand that he realized his position. That he would have to defend himself against the accusation that he was the third intruder. You're suggesting to the court that it was whilst in the trial, while in the progress, that he received the information? So that he could commit perjury in order to save his skin? Exactly. And the only person with knowledge of the investigation that he had any contact with is you, Inspector Gregson. This is a blooming outrage. Why would I be giving away details of our investigation to this fella? Hmm. I was summoned to his lordship's chamber during the recess in any case. Have you forgotten that? Quite true. I had a number of questions regarding that event that transpired at the Pawn Brokery. Which means... The first time these two laid eyes on each other was after proceedings resumed following the recess. Such a nice, pretty, white fellow could never be the murderer. <laughs> oh man, as he's bleeding from his arm. <laughs> Since then, they've been in full view of the stand, where such illicit discussions couldn't possibly have occurred, except for the time where I literally interrupted them in the middle of their conversation. Like, do you guys not remember these two? Like, like while Gina was giving her fucking testimony, these two were just sitting there having a good old chat. Oh, I just remember something, Reno. What is it, Iris? There was one time before, wasn't there? I think it was when Ginny was testifying. Oh yes, now that you mention it. When the bailiff was dispatched to retrieve McGilded's music box from the scene of the crime. That's it. It was during the testimony. I remember finding strange. I remember finding it strange at the time. Mr. Graydon and the inspector seemed to be having some kind of secret discussion. It would have been possible for you to give Mr. Graydon the information he needed then. You little toe rag. Ew, that's gross. <laughs> You're making this all up. I'm a respectable Scotland Yard inspector for crying out loud. Why would I do something like that? Why would I be giving away confidential details to the likes of this bloke? Admittedly, you wouldn't have had any reason to do something like that, not for no gain. But perhaps... 
it was part of a deal of some kind. Then it starts to make more sense. What deal, Council? I wonder if perhaps in exchange for details about the peephole at the scene of the crime, Mr. Graydon agreed to give a certain something to the inspector. I'm sure I need to remind the inspector that if found to be true, striking a deal of any kind with the witness would be considered a cross case of... I can't, I can't even say the word. I really just, I don't even, I don't even know it. I'm sorry. I failed. I'm a failure. Well, well, I... Objection. It's becoming clear that jumping in with accusations, wow, that jumping in with accusation is this Nipani student's specialty. I don't do that. I never do that. Why would I do that? But with the stakes so high, the prosecution is not prepared to listen to baseless charges. It is encumbered. Encumbered? Yeah. It is encumbered on the defense now to persist. To persist. To pre uh, present evidence in support of this debacle. Diabolical claim. Evidence. Just what are you. Just what are you posing that the inspector demanded? Probably evidence on his ongoing fucking investigation, right? Demand of the witness in return. The court seems, uh, the court seems proof of the alleged deal or whatever. I, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I'm losing my mind here. Mr. Grayson really did strike a deal with Gregson. Then logically, there's only one thing he could have asked for. Must be it. The second disc. Bruno, do you think what it could be? Hell yeah, I do. It's a missing link that joins all the dots together in the puzzle. I must press you for the answer now, Council. What evidence explains the nature of the alleged deal? The nature of the alleged deal, so... Okay, so I'm just gonna... Today's paper. There you go. This, my lord. This is exactly what the deal between these two men was all about. Hmm? Well, Inspector. Do you have... To, what do you have to say for yourself? Dear me. It would appear that the answer is no way satiated your appetite. Some of that bite should be the what? All right. All right. Whatever. <laughs> okay. I'm just gonna, you know. All right. We're just gonna. This is the one that I had going right. Please don't tell me it's so far behind. Please tell me I have it, like, at a good spot. I can't even remember the last time I saved. That's how that's how blank my mind is right now. Okay, yeah, it's not that far behind. All right, cool. All right. The nature of it, right? I mean, all I can think of is the other disc, but how would that... Right? I... I guess I can use the small box? Like, that's the only thing he would really ask for. Alright. Armband, cat flap. It's either the music disc, right? Mu music box disc, or... Or this. I'm gonna go with the disc first, just... I'm not sure if they would count this as, like, the one that the police already have, or if they would just count it as the nature, like, the other half of it, you know? Expect direction. Okay, so that was the right choice. Great. Besides this murder, it's not true that you've been working on another very important case? What? Are you getting, what are you getting at now, Sonny? Sunshine? Whatever. It's possible that the other top secret case... is what alluded to this newspaper article right here. Then why the fuck wasn't that the answer to the question if you're going to use it as part of your fucking evidence for your claim? That makes no sense. Oh my God. I'm going to have a, I'm going to blow a fucking head gasket. Why? <laughs> for what reason? Oh my God. No, you're wrong. The newspaper wasn't the right choice. It was actually the newspaper. Fuck you. 
classified secret been uh, being leaked overseas from the Ministry of Justice. See, this is why AA games are BS. Oh man, <laughs> like what the fuck? So fucking dumb. It sucks because it makes me look stupid, <laughs> and I know I'm not. Uh, how the bleeding Nora could could you? We discovered during the course of the trial that the music box that, that was another thing I could have used for this fucking claim. All right, whatever. That the music box deposited at many, at Winnie Banks by Mr. McGilded. A special music box designed to play two discs at once. It would seem very likely how the encoded wow that the encoded mm, I'm sorry. It would seem very likely now that encoded on the pair of discs that were in Mr. McGilded's possession are the leaked classified secrets. So I put it to you, Inspector. In, that order, in order to recover the second of the disc containing those secrets, you conveniently made a deal with Mr. Garridan, Mr. Garridan, I'm, fuck, kill me, with Mr. Graydon, <laughs> in which you ex exchanged the disc for details of the case. You little. Oh, man. Order. On the day of the incident, when we met... By the way, I just want to point out that the verdict's been held as guilty already for like the longest, and I was only supposed to have one cross-examination, but you know, whatever. <coughs> when we met with you at Windy Vakes, you said this. I'll be taking that whatever it is of Mr. McGill down to the yard. Thank you very much. So hand it over. No, don't. Don't give it to him. It's mine. I'm sorry, miss, but anything belonging to me gilded has to be taken as evidence now. Scotland Yard really knew at the time, isn't that right? That me gilded was involved in the stealing of government secrets. My orders were recover the medium used to convey the secret leaked from the ministry. And do not. <clears throat> and fuck. And do it on the QT. Strictly hush hush. That explains why, when I presented the disc as evidence to the court, you objected so heavily, I presume. You fucking knew why, Zykes. Shut up. <laughs> because you knew that it contained highly confidential information. Blimey, not likely. I mean, I wasn't that sure of it myself. I realized there was a possibility, that's all. Inspector, surely. Surely you're not saying that in order to acquire the second of the music box disc. You didn't you did indeed reveal confidential details of the crime scene to the witness. To aid and abet this man in giving false testimony. Hmm. There's no other way that Mr. Graydon would have found out about the existence of the people. It's the only explanation. A deal was struck between these two men. I'm still hungry, by the way. Objection. Oh my fucking god, just let it go, Zeiss. God damn it. If, and if, and I stress if, the sobering assertion turns out to be found in truth. Sobering? Sobering? I'm sorry. <laughs> it would mean that the second disc is as we speak here in this very room. Wait, what? In, in this room? How, should be, how can you make possible that claim? Because Inspector Gregson is Scotland Yard detective. What? What is that supposed to mean, huh? As a seasoned policeman, the inspector would have approached this alleged deal with caution. Certainly, he would not have accepted a gentleman's agreement in the matter. No, he would have insisted on having the article agreed upon in the palm of his hand. Good gracious. Then you mean to say... Inspector Gregson already has the item in question in his possession? He has the second disc actually on his person. Yes. The defense demands that the inspector is searched at once. Definitely. They could only have struck the deal with each other when Ginny was testifying before. And Gregson hasn't moved from the witness stand since. 
My lord, please. Order examination of his personal effects immediately. Hmm. Well, Inspector? This young lad wants to tone down his imagination. He insulted me and my profession quite enough. Oh my fucking god. However, if it puts this matter to bed and dispel any doubts about my involvement, I'll happily submit to a body search. Thank you. What? He's gonna agree. I presume you're aware of the of the <clears throat> I presume you're aware of the precipice of which you now teeter. My learned student friend. You make a most serious allegation against Scotland Yard here. If following the search of the inspector's personal effects, no disc is found, you'll be you'll be deemed unfit for court service. This trial will end. And my country's government will formally demand of yours that you and yours wait, wow. That you and yours are severely reprimanded. You can't be making demands like this, by the way, Bonzags. Sounds serious. Yeah, it does. Indeed. To have a visiting student make such, uh, defam- God damn it. Def defamatory- I can't say the word. Fuck me. Remarks about our country's most senior police force. It's not something Her Majesty government- Her Majesty's government will be able to overlook. You're just threatening room because you're scared. The accusation is beyond serious. You must be prepared for grave consequences. Mm. It's true. I can't imagine Gregson would have accepted gentleman's agreement for something so crucial. But this must have physically changed hands, which means the inspector could have it. But somehow, something doesn't feel quite right here. Where are you fuckers hiding it? Or is it put in, like, a safety deposit box somewhere? Hmm. Very well, Council. You know the implications. So, let me ask you one final time. Yes, my lord. Do you still persist in formally requesting a search of the inspector's personal effects? Okay. It's in his hat, isn't it? It's in his hat, isn't it? Alright, listen. I want to point something out right now. I'm not sure if you did this on purpose. Are you talking about Gregson's hat? Because you said that, right? And my mind has went to something else. Search someone else, please. Yes, the defense formally demands that you s that search be conducted. Well, <clears throat> don't say you weren't warned, but your typical Nipponese stubbornness may well land you in hot water this time. Perhaps the lesson will do you some good. Fair enough. I got nothing to hide. Very well then, bailiff. Conduct search on the inspector's personal effects. No, 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 not him. Not him. No. The defense demands a search of not the inspector. What? Now, what is this? Perhaps it means it the way you think. Now, when the trial started, this motherfucker threw his hat at me. <laughs> And he said, and, and you know, Ryanosuke said, I'm not going to be holding on to this hat for the whole entire trial. And then the hat just disappeared. Right? Out of sight, out of mind, right? Do I still have the hat on me? No, Inspector, not you. Somebody else. What's the meaning of this? The court shouldn't put up with this nonsense. You're being completely irrational. I just don't know who. Be quiet, all of you. Runo's doing what you told him to do, and he has the courage of his convictions. 
Now, I just got to make sure I choose the right person. And I think, is it possible that I can choose myself? So you should respect, you should respect that and listen to what he has to say in good faith. Because that's the British way. Good faith, my ass. Everyone's been racist to me the moment I got here. Well said, young lady. Indeed. The court is awe of the defense counsel's conviction and eagerly awaits his next words. But what? Don't be hasty, my lord. Okay. If I'm not mistaken about the things I've seen in court today, I'm fairly sure that I know who has the disc at the moment. There's only one person it can be. Counsel. All right. <coughs> Let's see. Our choices in here. I doubt it's these two, right? I mean, to be fair, I mean, since I can't choose myself, then it's definitely him, right? Because he's been refusing to get searched all day. Take that. So maybe? Mr. Ashley Graydon, my lord. The defense demands that he searched at once. Very well. I presume you will not protest, Mr. Graydon. On contraire. So, Bruce was carried on by the court bailiff. So what, he didn't have it? A few short minutes later, it was revealed that Miss Greta had nothing unusual on his person. Okay. Fuck you. Well, I can't choose myself, so... Who the hell could it be? Who else could it be? Actually, let me just see this play out real quick. Okay, you do get hurt by it. Alright, cool. Alright, just wanted to see. Wanted to make sure that they weren't doing like a psych out. Because this motherfucker threw his hat at me. <laughs> right? And I can't tell if like it's in there, right? But since I can't choose myself, I guess. You know? I might be overthinking it like I always do. Hmm. Did I give the hat to Iris? Did I? I don't quite remember. Iris, did I give the hat? See, I don't want to choose Iris, just out of principle. But, Iris, did I give the fucking hat to you? My lord. <laughs> Good grief. Possible. Uh. Yeah. Objection. Oh, wait, what? Why are you objecting to this? We see my Nipa as friend does not understand the gravity of requests. Yeah, see, I didn't give it to Iris. Yeah, they're gonna fuck me over on that one. I definitely didn't give it to Iris. And I can't choose myself, so. I have. I do have another thought, though. Maybe? I mean, two thoughts, I guess. I mean, honestly, at the end of the day, we can just keep choosing over and over. Like, it doesn't matter. But, I mean, let's not forget fucking... Holmes has just been laying on the floor the whole entire time. <laughs> and they took him out the room, too, right? So, there's that. And also, it might just be a design thing, right? I highly doubt that this is, you know... That Nash has it, but one of like one of his fucking pins on his coat is a different color, and I noticed that the first time I saw him, but I highly doubt that that's anything important. Um Unless he fucking snuck it in Gina's pocket or something. I don't fucking know. I highly doubt that Gregson has it. Her lock. 
<laughs> bring Chief Lord Justice in here. Just get his ass over here. Hmm. I mean, I kind of want to get it by myself. I don't just want to randomly pick it, right? Sure, why not? Search her luck. See what's happening. My lord. That person be searched. Okay, I see. No, nothing. Hmm. Have Zyke search for Lois? I know I was thinking about it, but I highly doubt, you know. Might as well, right? Might as well. I'm at a point, I'm at the point where my brain doesn't work no more. Right? Been doing this for like fucking five and a half hours. You know what, before before I search before I search Zykes, just to satiate my own curiosity. Search Nash. Oh my fucking god, was it really? Did I really like catch that shit? <laughs> Wait a minute. Well I've never. Like it's been bothering me this whole entire fucking this whole entire I haven't said nothing about it to be honest cuz I thought it was a stupid like little thing to look at but like as like the whole entire time they've been giving their testimony I just been looking at his fucking button on his fucking stupid ass coat and it's been bothering me <laughs> restrain the witness and conduct a thorough search of his personal effects Please, my lord. Inspector. Scotland Yard. Um, it has to object to this. Objection. No, you don't. No, you don't. Unfortunately for you, Inspector, my objections carry no weight here. Eh? In this courtroom, only the prosecution and defense have the authority to object. Wait, what he said? He said mine or yours? I'm sorry. I'm, I'm losing my mind here. But, my lord von Zykes. I have no idea what forces are playing in that might influence your actions. But personally, I have no intention of obscuring the uh, obscuring, yeah, obstructing the courts of this the course of this trial. Even though you did a million times already. But anyways. Bailiff, carry out the search. It's his button. Look at that button. It's been bothering me the whole entire fucking time. Now hold on. I don't know nothing. Nothing about no disc. Cut it out. Give me that fucking button. It's been bothering me this whole entire fucking trial. Oh, it's in his pocket? Oh, never mind. Damn it. Good lord. <laughs> Another music box disc. I don't know nothing about it. Nothing. I don't know nothing. Nothing. I don't know about nothing. This is the second music box that's left behind by McGilded. Is it not, Inspector Gregson? I'm kind of mad that it wasn't his button. I'm be honest. Order! Mr. Skulkin, what do you got to say for yourself? Gordon Bennett, I mean just... Gordon Flamin' Bennett. I don't know what the fuck that means, but anyways. I swear I didn't know nothing about this, honest to God. Counsel, could you please explain what exactly is going on here? The alleged deal that was struck was between this witness and the detective, no? Without question, my lord. Then for Pete's sake. Why on earth was this man in possession of the disc that the inspector traded for information? Inspector Gregson is a shrewd, calculating man who rarely loses his composure. Oh, it's when he was struggling him. It's when he was like, you know, just fucking wringing his neck out. But at a particular point in the trial, he exhibited some unusual behavior for a brief moment. That's the giveaway for it. See, my giveaway was completely stupid. Just because his button was a different color. <laughs> I completely forgot all about that. I don't recall. What unusual behavior. 
It was, yes, during the cross-examination of Mr. Graydon. Tell me, Mr. Graydon, what left you the prom bro uh, why'd you left the prom brokery that night? Was it by chance that the second disc in your jacket, second disc in your jacket pocket? I admit to nothing of the sort. Well, Mr. Graydon, the fuck is that smell? <laughs> I'm sorry, I got distracted. It smells like someone, you know, you know what like fruity bubble gum smells like? I just got like a whiff of that. Mr. Garadun answered my questions. Mr. Graydon, my bad, Garadun. I keep fuck. I'm sorry. I keep mixing what's his name. Mr. Garadab and Graydon's names. Uh, the inspector appeared to have grabbed Nash Skulkin by the coat and was shaking him violently. Yeah, he did and all. Thought me noggin was gonna fall clean off my head. I was wishing I'd been born by my bro- Uh, what? I was wishing I'd been born as- as my brother. As my brother, I was. Sure, as your brother. What exactly happened to make the detective attack you like that? I ain't got no clue. He just suddenly turned and grabbed me. It's crazy. Why the blazes did you mention the third gun when you were down in the station? That's what he said. He yelled at it right down my air hole, didn't it? His head still throb. My head still throbbing now. Hmm. The way the detective behave, then was extremely out of character. But looking back now, it must have been that he it must have been when he did it. That was the opportunity Inspector Gregson created for himself in order to hide the disc. Well bless my wig, he hit it. You But I'm afraid I failed to comprehend the motive here. If the detective had acquired the disc he was after. Why on earth would he proceed to hide it in another man's pocket? Just in case he needs to be searched. This is a court of law. He could have submitted the item as evidence. It would appear, my lord, that the inspector was not at liberty to do that. Why ever not? As the man himself revealed earlier, his current assignment has some special conditions. My orders were... Cover the medium used to convey the secret leaks from the Ministry. And do it on a QT, strictly hush-hush. Hush-hush. Top secret assignment, is it? As far as we're aware, the information stolen comes from confidential government communications. It would seem that if the information were to be revealed in the court as evidence, it would be problematic. Does that sum up the situation, Inspector? I'm operating under direct orders from the Ministry. I'm afraid I cannot, I'm not at liberty to answer that question. So, realizing there was a chance that you may be searching, uh, be searched here in the court, you took steps to hide the disc and a, that you acquired from the witness. Does this mean? You only pretended to attack Mr. Skulkin in order to get close enough to him to slip the second disc into his pocket. So, it was all a pretense. Pretense? Yeah, that's a word, I guess. I don't know. Alright, we proved that they're guilty. Alright, cool. Can we finish this fucking... <laughs> finish this fucking trial? Well now, Inspector Regson, and you too, Garadin. Uh, Garadin. Graydon. You know what I mean. Are you prepared to admit the accusations made against you? Of the alleged deal? Just think... Just come on, man. Just give up. Admit to it. Yours truly, please. Mr. Graydon. Clearly our Eastern visitor has an uncommonly active imagination. However, there's no proof that I passed the disc to the inspector. Protection. Oh my fucking god, kill me. But then, how do you explain the reason why you knew about the peephole? I'm under no obligation to explain. What? Yes. I lied in my testimony, that I admit, so sentence me accordingly. But that is all I admit. Murder? Leaking government secrets? Striking a deal with the detective? All this, <clears throat> all this is young Eastern man's fancies. Fancy or whatever, you know what I mean? I have no idea what any of this is all about. Oh my fucking god. 
Guys, just give up. Just give up. Just give up. This fucking... This goddamn trial's been going on too damn long. Well, what about you then, Inspector? Do you admit making a deal with Garrett? Garrett, you know, you know what I mean, that jackass, in order to acquire the disc. Oh my gosh, shut the fuck up, ladies and gentlemen of the jury. As Scotland Yard Inspector, I will declare that this is nothing more. I am acting in best interest of the country. Whatever I've done, it's been in the name of justice. So, as a member of the public in this fine country. I like to think that justice will be your guiding light when you make your decision. Fuck. We're gonna lock someone up who's innocent for justice? Fuck you. It's quite a quandary indeed. Really, I have encountered such extraordinary. Uh. Tum God damn it. Tumulaeus. Tumulaeus. Tum 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 fuck. That's a, that's a word. Tumultuous. That's how you say that, right? Tumultuous. I think so. In the uh, in the concluding of in the concluding of a trial, concluding of a trial, motherfucker. It's been concluding for fucking two hours. Nevertheless, in the absence of any further evidence to be present, I believe it is time that we pull the matter of the jury for the final leanings. Well, now, as fellow servant of the queen and country, I must say I sympathize with the old inspector. It's five thirty. You have work at eight. I didn't have work. I didn't have work last night. That's why I'm streaming. <laughs> Gonna take a nap before work. Yeah, go ahead. If you need, you definitely need to get that sleep in. Go ahead. Thanks for stopping by for the stream. If you're heading out, I appreciate it. I'm stretching right now, by the way. Yes, he's the. He's a dependable man. I'm quite sure. In service, one becomes a great judge of character. Loud ass car passing my house. Even crossing your eyes doesn't help when it comes to looking at this case. It's all blurred to me. Well, as a fellow professional, I like to put my faith in the detective, really. Great and highly skilled operator, stop. Currently, alright, well, you're just a bitch, honestly. Detective was very much trust in, has very much trust in eyes. More than I cannot say. I don't believe it. Six jurors? And one of them's just voting guilty because fucking she's wet for the other guy. <laughs> they were, they're gonna believe Gregson? If they declare their decision now, is Jenny gonna be found guilty? If I don't manage to produce some definite evidence right now, then we're gonna lose. Some proof that Grant and killed Mr. Winnie Banks, stole those government secrets. Or some evidence that forced Gregson to admit that he struck a deal with the witness. Fuck it. Start playing it in court. Just start playing the disc in court. Fuck it. Who cares? Well then, counsel. I think it's time to impose... <clears throat> impose on the jurors to declare the final decision, no? This is unless you have some compelling evidence this far. If I let the judge call on the jurors to announce their leanings, Gina will be found guilty. But there's no choice there, Reno. You have to throw some more evidence at them. Consider now how it comes down to this. Who do I present the evidence against, Gregson? Ooh. What evidence? can I even do? Um... This is way too fucking much. Alright. I mean, it hasn't, it, it has not had a chance to show its true colors yet. So, I'm going to do the only thing I can really think of right now. Inspector Gregson. Inspector Gregson. 
There's one final piece of evidence I would like you to see. Eh? What is that then? If you refuse to acknowledge that you did in fact strike a deal with the witness here today, then you leave us no choice but to examine this piece of evidence thoroughly. Well, go on. This is my last chance. Looks like I'm gonna have to force his hand here. One final piece of evidence to get this detective to admit that his deal is clearly struck with Graydon. This is the only thing I can think of. The Hound of the Baskervilles. I don't know what's in this story, but whatever it is, must incriminate him in some sort of fucking way. What on earth is this, Council? Irrefutable proof, my lord. Okay. He means directly with these two people? Or perhaps... Irrefutable proof of the corrupt workings of a learned friend of mine. Yeah. Okay. Just making sure. Alright. So it has to be proof between those two. Alright, cool. I thought I was gonna, like, hurt his character, you know? Kind of make the jury read the story and go, wait a minute. Huh. Alright, let me relook this over. Pawnbroker. Okay. Three witnesses' testimony, however, was surprising for for this testimony resulted in acquittal due to the evidence. Mm. Any proof that they? Exchanged. Yo, this is fucking. This one's actually really difficult. Wait, I can choose people now? Present evidence against. I present evidence against. What the fuck? I have no idea. There's nothing else for me to check either. I don't think so. Um. Far not found possession of Skulkin Brothers and their arrest. There's. Signs that single round was fired. They said they fired their gun, so I don't think. I don't think. A photo of the dead body. Optopsy report. Today's paper. The case notes. On the coat. What would prove that they exchanged the disc? How does that work? I don't... I can't leave it to the jury, that's for fucking sure. Hmm... What the hell did they say to me, Ayers? I think it's time to impose jurors declare their final decision no, unless you have compelling evidence thus far not present to the court. Not present to the court. If I let the judge call on the juror to announce their leaning, she know will be found guilty. So there's a choice then, Reno. You have to throw some more evidence at them. But what evidence? What evidence and on who? 
like I have I think my mind has exhausted every bit that I can right now except for just play the fucking music disc right now <clears throat> How do you... I honestly don't know. I'm, I'm at a loss for words here. Holy shit. You know what? Because... Hmm. Damn it. I was going to say, let me just look up the answer, honestly, because I can't think of jack shit right now, really. Oh, fucking Christ. What? What would help us furthermore? Right? Definitive evidence that we need to prove... in Korea when analyzed. I mean, he's wearing gloves, right? So it wouldn't really make sense. I guess Graydon? Graydon? There's one final piece of evidence I would like for you to see. Hmm. Misguided fool. And I'll be wasting your time. I have nothing left to lose. I assure you, I will admit to nothing. My last chance. Looks like I'm gonna have to force his hand here. One final piece of evidence to get him to admit that he struck a deal on the stand. Yeah, no, it's definitely wasted on Graydon. That's for sure. He's not gonna admit to jack shit. Mm. I don't know the music box. What? All right. Explain. And if the answer is we're gonna play the disc. <laughs> hmm. Is that Mr. McGill this peculiar music box cancel? Council? Yes. With the disc already in place, ready to play. I think perhaps now would be a good time to listen to the sound produced by the music box again. Only this time. With the second disc we just discovered set in place as well. Oh my god. I was on the right track. Goodness, this disc council. No, wait, wait, I can't let you do that. Why not, huh? B because, uh, well... It's got nothing to do with this case, that's why. Objection. Oh, well, if it's got nothing to do with the case, then let me, let me listen to it, okay? Not true, Inspector. Huh? The defense has already proposed that the sounds, here by the, uh, the sounds heard by the court from this music box were part of a Morse code message. We know that most chord, uh, most chord. We know that Morse code comprises of two distinct tones. The defense believes that the second disc contains the second tone needed to complete the message. And now that we have a chance to confirm the theory, for crying out loud, sunshine, we're talking about state secrets here. If you go letting the whole con the whole courtroom hear confidential information like that, it'll be treason. Then do you admit the charge? That in order to protect those state secrets, you engage in unlawful dealings with the witness? You're... <laughs> You're fucking mad! You would let the secret information out to the public domain? You... You'll be making an enemy of the entire British government, you idiot! Let's not forget, Inspector, that you, a Scotland Yard officer, leaked confidential case details to a witness. That you continue to lie in court 
and all because all because by fair means of foul wait what and all because by fair means of foul you determined it to be your duty well by fair means of foul I'm prepared to do mine if you expect perfection of me I expect perfection of you I will stop at nothing to protect my client I don't care who I make an enemy out of My lord, if you please. The court must hear the sounds made by the music box. Come on, Von Zyx, for Pete's sake, stop him. Objection. Y'all motherfuckers are getting out of hand in this court. <laughs> Inspector, you should know my methods by now. I'm a prosecutor. I'm no Scotland Yard puppet. In the courtroom, my duty is to the law. So let me propose a toast. To uncovering the truth. By fair means or foul. At least we can agree on something. Very well. The defense stance here and that of the prosecution has been made very clear, I feel. Therefore, in accordance with the defense request. You better say something, Gregson. The court will now listen to the music box. Set operate <laughs> music box is set in operation once more. Oh my fucking god. This time with the second disc in place, and both discs playing simultaneously. Just admit it, 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 you're fucked. Oh shit. All right, all right, I admit it. Whatever you want. But for the love of God, shut the blooming box up. Dude, I can't believe I fucking caught that one. Because I really had no fucking, like, I had nothing. I had nothing to go on. Let me ask you again then, Inspector Gregson. Did you, or did you not, Strike a deal with the witness next to you in the stand, Mr. Ashley Graydon. Specifically, did you furnish the witness with confidential case details in exchange for this music box disc? Did you reveal the existence of the peephole in the pawnbroker's storeroom door, Inspector? I did. Stop! What are you doing, man? It's all exactly like the young Easterner lawyer said. When the trial resumed after the recess, and we were stood here and stand together, that's when he approached me with the deal. Shut up, you imbecile. Shut up! It's you there. You're the detective who turned up at the pawnbroker the other day, aren't you? I may have something you're looking for, Inspector, with me at this very moment. So how about a trade? I suggest you accept. Or information that could make certain individuals uncomfortable will soon become very public indeed. I couldn't let the information become public knowledge, not under any circumstance. So I, ex I, well, so I accepted the man's proposal and told him details about the case that should have put him in the clear. The people in the storeroom door and the bloodstains on the overcoat. By giving false testimony, the witness intended to have the defendant wrongly accused of murder. Mighty. Inspector, you knew that. Yet you still reveal those details falsating the witness's perjury. Falsating? Not falsating. Why do I say fel uh, fel it? Uh... Whatever the fuck the word was. You know what I mean. I did. <coughs> but then... It turned out the people had only been made that night after the incident took place. Scotland Yard wasn't aware of that, if I'm perfectly honest. Well, Mr. Gr Graydon, what do you have to say for yourself? There's nothing and no one left for you to hide behind. You struck a deal with the inspector in order to escape conviction of a very serious crime. Namely this. 
You are the third intruder to. You are you the third intruder who broke into the prom brokery on the night in question. And you perpetrated the murder of the proprietor, Mr. Pop Windybank. I love his hair progressively got more messier. Oh my fucking god. <laughs> Traitor! Oh! Guys, someone, help him. Bailiff, restrain that man at once. That's it then. It's all over. Fucking finally. Literally six hours of streaming this game. I despise my life growing up. Those slums are vile places. I was cursed from birth, born into poverty, the son of a penniless artisan. My parents did nothing but quarrel all day long. The little money they had was never spent on me. So I set about studying to better myself, to one day escape from that hellhole. You eventually became a communications officer. I admire your determination. But then you decided to try and sell government secrets. Why? Isn't it obvious? Because I wanted money. Even now, years later, the nightmares of my life in the slums wake me in the small hours. I wanted to drown them out with more money than anyone could live in that squalor could ever imagine. Then one day, I met him. Mr. Mag Mr. Magnus McGilden. Oh my fucking god, it's even hard to read what the hell he's saying. You're a- you're a Finn with the queer- with the- with the- with the square talent- oh, whatever the fuck. So you- Wait, so you are? I have no fu- okay. You're a fiend with the- Okay, you're a teen with a rare talent, so you are. I think that's what he's saying. I have money to throw your way if you're interested. All you need to do is go along with me my little plan now. I was to steal the Ministry Telegraphic Message Logs and McGilded would buy them for a handsome sum. As I was responsible for ins inspections of the Ministry Communications Office, it was a simple enough task. To lure the Devil's offerings, how easy it is to succumb. But you must surely have realized the, serious of the seriousness of the crime you were committing. And for that reason, I took great lengths to ensure that my actions were untraceable. By using the music box? My father was a brickmaker, though my mother divorced him when I was still a child. Yes, Mr. Mason, uh, Melver, Mel, whatever the fuck, you know their names. That's right. He was very skilled with his hands. He once been a music box maker apprentice. I imagine his skills would be sufficient to create a machine that could generate Morse code. So I sought out my father again to employ his services. It was the first time I've seen him since I left the slum ten years earlier. Look at you, Ashley. What a fine gent you've become, eh? He was a different man to the one in my memory. A thin, frail old man. But poverty has never broke him. Never corrupted him like it had me. I was sure that he wouldn't help me if I told him the real reason. So I made up a story. I got some work for you, father. I need a music box disc made. Music box disc, eh? A musician friend of mine has written some music he wants to sell to the public. I brought the scores with me. There are two, actually. I'll be delighted, son. It's been 20 years since I did any work like this, though. Fetch my tools, would you? They're in the loft. 
That's how I had him make the two disc. Thereby splitting the information into two. You were taking considerable precautions indeed. It was to protect myself as much as anything. It meant that I could deal with McGilded in two separate transactions. The first involved the first of the two discs in the music box for the player for playing them. I exchanged them with McGilded for ten guineas. Then on then on receipt of the second disc, he would pay a thousand guineas. So, what happened to the omnibus two months ago? Was the second part of the deal? The exchange of the second disc? Yes. I sold the man information that way, that way a number of times already. But it seems he became reluctant to part with his money. But that doesn't quite make sense, Mr. Graydon. For why was it that on the omnibus two months ago, your father, Mr. Melverton, was the one dealing with Miss Gilded and not you? When I received the thousand guineas after my first completed dealings with McGilded, I decided to give two hundred to my father for his troubles. But my father realized something was amiss. In time, he worked out that I must have been involved in something dubious. And when he did, he said to me, Next time there's an exchange, you let your old man do it, understand? Otherwise, I won't take your money anymore. That was my father's way of dealing with it, I suppose. Climb into the omnibus, hand over the second disc, and take the money from the gilded. That's it. He had no idea what exact what actually was on the disc, I asked. I asked him to make. He never knew. Just like I never knew why everything went so horribly wrong that night. All I know is that the disc was taken from him. And he never returned home. It was only then I found out what sort of monster McGill it really was. So after ten years of not once uttering it, I swore my father's name. To exact revenge. Revenge? As anyone with even the remotest knowledge of the man will no doubt be able to imagine, Begilda had brought all of his wealth and influence to bear in the most despicable of ways. To crush and semblance of, uh, any semblance of justice in his trial. The crime scene was tampered with, evidence was fixed, and witnesses were bribed. The trial two months ago was a farce from start to finish. My feet had barely touched British soil back then. And I walked into the hornet's nest, completely unaware of the sinister background to it all. I made plenty of money out of dealings with, with McGilded by then. So I spent nothing in my arrangements two months ago. I spared, my bad. I spared nothing in my arrangements two months ago. I knew exactly who to hire. If you're willing to pay the price, there are people in this city willing to do anything you ask. McGilda himself has shown me that. Are you saying that? I think you have the picture now. After he twisted everything in his favor in his courtroom to ensure that he would walk free. I took matters into my own hands and delivered the justice the monster deserved. That tragic incident, that tragic accident following the trial here two months ago was planned and executed by yours truly. He killed his death that day. It was because of this man? Everything's ready, sir. If you like, follow me into the courtroom. What's this officer? Too sooner than I was led to believe. I hope it's not inconvenient, sir. There were some changes to the schedule. Well, I must be making my tracks now. It's time for the inspection. They're going to examine the omnibus again, so I'm told. I asked if I can be present for it myself. 
so that policeman who came to tell McGill that he could examine the omnibus again. That's right, an imposter hired by me. McGilda used his wealth to manipulate the trial. He paid people to alter the omnibus with all manners of false evidence. He threatened witnesses to lie to their testimonies. So I gave the man a test of his... I can't read. I gave the man a taste of his own medicine. Once the omnibus was doused in... And, and paraffin, and paraffin. I can't. I can't say the word. I'm sorry. One of my sh one of my sham policemen ushered McGilded inside and sent him on a one way journey to hell. An eye for an eye. That's how I avenge my father's death. Spine chilling account indeed. But that wasn't the end of it for me. There was a loose end, you see. A loose end. Yes, I should think it's obvious. The second disc, which my father had taken to exchange with the McGilded. Mm, yes. There was indeed no mention of this man's tr of of that. Wow. Well, there was indeed no mention of it in the man's trial two months ago. Clearly, because it had been removed from the scene of the crime. When I realized it was missing, I remembered something. Something from some time I dealt with McGilded. This is the first of two discs in the music box you need to play them. Well, look at that now. What an ingenious little invention. So then, as promised, ten guineas for you, young man. What? What's this? Winnie Bank's pawn brokery. Aye. It's a pawn brokery ticket, so it is. You can use it to redeem an article you've disposed there for you. I deposit there for you. My bad, I'm sorry. There's no need to give a name. Just hand over the ticket and tell the fine... Uh, tell the fiend? The fiend? Whatever. The watchword. I put a jewel in pawn for you. It's fetch a good ten guineas if you sell it. I never heard of pawn brokery, but... Of uh, being used in quite this way before. Have you not? Have you not, Mr. Graydon? London's pawn brokeries are very useful places, you know. Each one is like an extremely secure vault. So I knew that if I had taken steps to hide the disc, if he'd taken steps to hide the disc, it would be in the pawn brokery somewhere. And that on that night he killed my father. He must have entrusted the ticket to someone. Yes, to Gina. I remember now. That's when we first met you at Windy Banks that afternoon two days ago. You had a description of Miss Lestrade written down. How did you know who you were looking for? From the trial, the pickpocket's testimony was clearly peculiar. Anyone could see that. I realized immediately that she was another of McGilded's pawns. That he must have been threatening her somehow. I was fairly convinced that it would be her who had the ticket, so I started to make some inquiries. I had a strong suspicion the girl would come out of the woodwork on the rep on the redemption deadline. He was absolutely right. And yes, sure enough, she did. All I needed to do was wait until the girl went to Wendy Banks to redeem the article. But unfortunately, she redeemed only McGilded's overcoat and the one disc that was in his pocket. The all-important music box with the second disc inside was missing. Because it had already been forfeited two days earlier. But I was aware of that fact. I had not... Wait, what? But I was unaware of that fact. <laughs> had I not been, I could have avoided my nighttime excursion. Meanwhile, as our investigation into the stolen government secrets were pro was processing, uh, progressing, my bad, we picked up on the fact that McGilded was involved. Inspector, you recovered fast. My orders would have recovered the stolen information as quickly as possible. So, we started gathering the fellow's possession and examining whatever we could to lay our hands on. Uh, whatever we could lay our hands on. God damn it. 
We had a full-scale investigation going on in the yard, but we had to keep it as quiet as we could. Then, when the inspector here took the disc from me in the Palm Brookery that day, I became nervous. I was sure the music box and the second disc were still there in the shop somewhere, so I knew it was a race against time. I had to find those articles before the police did. So, that's what prompted you to break into the place that same night. With the help of your old friend, the Skulkin Brothers. What happened that night in the pawn brokery? I can only describe it as a nightmare. While Nash and Ringo were searching the counter, I located the music box and I sold the McGilded on the shelves of forfeited articles. And the second disc was inside? Yes. I slipped it into my pocket with a very deep sigh of relief. But then, something entirely unexpected happened. What are you doing in my shop? A gunshot rang out from the shop and I felt a sharp pain in my left arm. The broker fired the gun and the bullet pierced your limb. Yes, exactly. But unfortunately, I decided to bring my own gun with me that night, just in case. Before I knew what was happening, I fired back. The man had already turned to flee. I had an intent to fire in his direction, much less kill him. But unfortunately for both of us, the bullet hit home. He struck him in the middle of his back and he fled through the second he fled through the storeroom door for refuge. A sorry, sorry tale. It all took place in the blink of an eye. I don't imagine Nash and Ringo even realized what had happened at first. I was terrified, so I fled. And that's the whole story. That's everything that happened at Winnie Banks on that wretched night. Earlier, you called Miss Gilded a monster. A man who used his wealth and influence to distort the facts and escape justice for the crime of murder. What tragic irony. For what you have done, it's exactly the same. You become the very monster you saw and despised so deeply in Miss Gilded. Yes, I think I have. Well, this has been a long and exhausting trial. Fuck you. Six, six hours, and that's not even the whole trial. That's the second, oh my God. <coughs> my last stream was like five. And that was the part, and that was part of this trial. However, it would seem that the last we arrived to the truth. Professor Gregson, what of Mr. Ashley Graydon? He's been restrained, my lord, and he's being escorted to the yard. He'll be charged with murder of Mr. Winniebakes. And stealing government secrets. Very good. I had to yawn, I'm sorry. And you, Inspector. Regrettably, you will have to face charges yourself. Yes, my lord. Of course. Uh, it transpires that you were compli- that you were compli- wow, damn it. It tran- it transpires that you were complicit in helping a criminal escape justice. The fact remains whether or not you were doing so in the line of duty. The crime is a serious one, Inspector. Inexcusable. Now to the defendant, Miss Le Gina Lestrade. Your perjury? 
It is time for the final adjudication. Is the jury ready for Mr. Foreman? Yes, sir. Gyrodeb Squadron standing by, sir. This is really this is really it now. The last push, the final call, the finishing whistle. My men are ready to deliver their verdicts. Thank you, Mr. Foreman. Very well, ladies and gentlemen of the jury. You will now declare your final decision to the court. Not guilty. Not guilty. Not guilty. Not guilty. Not guilty. Not guilty. There we go. <laughs> That's the stuff. I'm off the hook. Finally, Reno. You finally managed to do it. What do you mean, finally? Finally is the word. I really wish... I really wasn't sure if we come out on top of this. Susie was right. You are the best lawyer in the world. Fuck you guys. Mr. Lestrade, I'm not finished with you yet. Huh? What? What are you looking at me like that for? Before you start enjoying your freedom, there's a certain other crime to consider, hmm? Uh, uh, two months ago, in my courtroom, no less, you gave false testimony, did you not? And in relation to today's trial, not only did you unlawfully enter Winnie Bank's pawnbrokery, you also attempted to abscond with Mr. McGilda's property, it seems. I never done nothing of the sort. Of course not. It's not like you were gleefully wearing McGilded's coat in your cell yesterday or anything. Aww. Just when I was getting excited about throwing a party for Jenny. And turning our attention to the defense. Determining that when, when played together, the music box uh, disc contained a message in Morse code. Was well... It was certainly a more unexpected revelation, Council. Quite so, my lord. The prosecution was caught entirely off guard. In fact, I think we should applaud my learned friend's courage here today. I propose a toast. Oh, maybe you're a little less racist now? To demanding the government's secrets be dismantled before the entire courtroom. Fuck you. Very sorry about that. It was the only way I could get Inspector Gregson to admit what he had done. If... If I may say something on that point. Isn't that... It's, um, about the sound produced by the music box before. I do wonder... If it was really Morse code at all. What? What do you say, madam? Oh, well, it's just that I'm really rather fascinated when it comes to Morse code, you see. So much so that the whole world seems to seems to be covered in dots and dashes, to me, in fact. Goodness, madam. An unhealthy level of deception. But I must say that, in my opinion, the sounds produced by these two discs were nothing more than that. A meaningless, a meaningless, <clears throat> a meaningless series of two different tones. What? Can that really be? It wasn't Morse code after all? Okay. Wait, so he was selling fake secrets? What? I'm confused. My lord, the defense would like to listen to the music box again. Are you, are you off your nut? How many times do I have to tell you those discs contain... Minist uh, ministerial fuck, I can't say the word. Ministerial secrets, sunshine. This courtroom is not an appropriate form to discuss the nature of government communications. We know McGilda conspired to trade national secrets with our enemy, secrets acquired from Mr. Graydon. Now that a man has admitted to his crimes, we have no need to pursue the matter in fact. A matter, matter in fact, matter for, you know what I mean, fuck. Hmm, but it's really gonna bother me. Miss Lestrade. Yeah, my lord? That what you have seen today here in this courtroom is to be extremely disturbing. 
falsified evidence, intimidation, perjury, a grim catalog of of a uh, deprivery. De de you know what I mean? An appalling experience to befall my, any child. Come on, it ain't nothing. It ain't nothing I done see most days in back of the slums. I beg your pardon. If you're weak, you pay for it. That's just how life goes. Gina. But look, I reckon I worked something out today. The world ain't fair, but if you want to change it, you gotta start at home. You gotta change how you how you are yourself. Well, that's a very laudable lesson, I would say. I eagerly look forward to a born again Miss Lestrade never gracing my courtroom with her presence again. Now, with regard to the murder of Mr. of Mr. Pop Winnie Banks, proprietor of the prom broker business on Baker Street, I hereby declare the defendant, Miss Gina Lestrade, not guilty. Six, almost six and a half hours. You still have that? That is all. Court is adjourned. Oh my fucking god. On a personal note, moat? Why did I say it like that? On a personal note, I must say you're su you surprised me. My far eastern friend. Oh. Oh. Despite being a Nipponese, you saw, uh, you saw through the pretense to the malice that festered within the Englishmen. And at the same time, saw through the grim, the grim, the grime <laughs> to the surprising heart of your English client. I am so sorry. I am tired and I can't read no more. You have a curious talent for judging character, especially considering our very difficult cultures. Our very difficult, our very different cultures. I am so fucking sorry. I don't think there's any anything curious about it. Whether we're from Empire of Great Britain or the Empire of Japan, we're all human beings. We're not so very different on the inside. You know, I took this case for one very simple reason. To lock swords with you again, here in the courtroom. You did? When I encountered you for the first time two months ago, it reminded me. Of toasting friendships and trust with another Nipponese, only to find my trust betrayed. Through you, I hope to look into the eyes of the man I once knew and try to understand. You mentioned something similar earlier today about total betrayal at the hands of a Japanese. What happened exactly? Well, you may ask. And one day, when the time comes, you will learn the answer whether you like it or not. All right, then I'll wait for that day if I must. Coming to be known as the Reaper of the Bailey in my retirement from service five years ago, it gives me cause to wonder if our meeting has some deeper purpose So, farewell, my learned Nipponese fellow, until we meet again.
how much longer do I have to play this game? Because I really want to end the fucking stream. <laughs> Alright, let's all say our congratulations and wrap up, please, for fuck's sake. It's done. It's over at last. I'm going to skim through this because I'm, I'm very tired. But, 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 where did I always disappear to? Huh? Congratulations, Gina. I knew it all along. I knew that you were innocent. Well, you did what you said, Mr. Naruto. You believed in me, right up to the end. You're as odd as your name. What ab what's odd about it? I told you I had faith in you, didn't I? No one's ever asked before, you see. Kept the promise, I mean. Properly. Well, that's awful. I figured something out today. All my life, growing up in the slums, I never trusted no one. But that's just because I've been scared of being stabbed in the back. I mean, the more you trust someone, the more it hurts when they let you down. Yes, I think I can understand that. After all, I had a taste of that in the trial two months ago. I chose to trust someone and paid for it. That betrayal left a big scar. You know though, Gina, I worked something out quite recently too. Trusting in someone else is really an exercise in learning to trust yourself. And when your gut tells you it's the right thing to do and you trust in it and, and your trust is rewarded, there's no better feeling in the world. I think I have to thank you for reminding me of that valuable lesson. Oh, well, if you say so. Don't make a fat lot of sense to me, though. I'm trying to say that putting my faith in you, Gina, has been a real pleasure. For crying out loud, pack it in. But I suppose I sort of feel the same way. I mean, sometimes trusting someone else is, you know, all right. Thanks. This is the way I see it, Ryunosuke. A defense lawyer is only as good as his faith in his client. And that comes down to how much faith he has in himself. After this experience, I'm starting to feel like I understand what you mean. Kazuma. Am I living up to your expectations? Am I turning out to be the lawyer you believe I could be? Pardon the interruption. Un pardon. But, what the deuces does a man have to do to be noticed around here, my dear fellows? Fuck you, shlomes. Oh, that voice. It's too late for that voice now, Mr. Narahodo. I've been standing here patiently in the corner of the room for an eternity. <laughs> yes, it was me all along. I would have said when you finally noticed me. But you people, with your insistent blabbering. Mr. Sloans. Yes, it was me all along, you see. You're weird. You're weird. You're a weird guy. I assumed you'd be taking it back at the hospital, to be honest. Indeed I was, but I managed to escape again. Oh. Okay. Happened to be aware of one or two foibles of the doctor who was tending to me. I merely made my knowledge of them known to the man, and he happily issued me with a leave of absence. How very above the board. But, enough of my adventures. That was a fine victory, Mr. Narahodo. Your tireless efforts justly rewarded, I feel. Congratulations are in order. As a close friend, I tip my hat to you. Oh, um, thank you. Hm. Some great detective you are. Great at, great at being cold as ice, maybe. Have I irked you in some way, Miss Lestrade? While you were being ha while you were been having a snooze in your nice soft bed, 
Some of us have been fighting for our lives. Oh, well. See, that bullet did cost me... A, it just cost... <clears throat> it caused me to lose a substantial amount of blood. It's true. So, I have indeed been falling, feeling somewhat cold. Not perhaps as cold as ice, but... Well, have a feel. Could you take your hand off my neck, please, Mr. Slums? And, in some way, I suppose congratulations are in order to you too, Miss Lestrade. What's that supposed to mean? Why so half why so half hearted? Well, naturally, it isn't my intention to alarm you, but an acquittal in a trial with a peculiar with a peculiar prosecutor is perhaps a little precarious? Well done, Mr. Slums. Not alarming in the slightest. Oh, the Reaper, you mean. Because anyone who's found guilty in the trial was working on, on wow. Because anyone who's not found guilty was working up wins, uh, up dead, and, oh, fuck it, whatever. I can't read. The very point I'm trying to make, as, as, an, as an exemplified, exemplified, exam, example, yeah, exemplified by the fate of Mr. McGilded, in fact. Ah, but of course, I pay no attention to such irrational dri drive myself. Dribble, drive, I'm sorry, drive, dribble, fuck, I can't read. Yeah, well, it don't bother me. Oh, really? Of course not. The way I see it, the Reaper's... The Reaper's uh, a bit like I'm upstairs. Uh, what? The Reaper's a bit like I'm upstairs. Him upstairs, you mean... Like God? Yeah. I'm upstairs, you know? Oh, wait, what? Oh, him upstairs. I'm sorry, fuck. Goddamn accent is killing me. Yeah, him upstairs. You know what's what, right? You know what people are like on the inside? You won't have the wrong idea. Uh, you won't have. Wait, what? You won't. Mm, you won't have got the wrong end of the stick. There are some coves like the Bog Trotter, what are rotten to the core. And the end of the. At the end of the. Damn it. At the end of the day, I, him upstairs, make sure they get what they deserve. I suppose that's one way to look at it. Divine justice is one thing, though. The Reaper taking matters in his own hands and claiming lives is another. Well, I ain't like McGilded. <laughs> I'm not the McGilded's of the world, so I ain't scared. I got principles, you see? A trade in which... A trade in which is... Fuck. Trade of you... Fuck. A trade in you which is to be admired. I'm losing my mind as I play this game. Oi! Boy there. <laughs> Just give it a rest, all right? As I was saying, congratulations are in order. The news of your acquittal was very welcome news to, my, to me indeed. Let us express my heartfelt congrats, congratulations, Gina. Well, um... There you are, Hurley. How long you been here? Hey, Iris. What the hell happened to you and why did you leave? Honestly, I went to the main entrance, uh, especially to meet you there. Oh, Iris, my dear, I do apologize. But, wait until I tell you what happened, the pair made other fools of themselves. What happened? As you know, I have, have a pretense for disguise. I was hiding in the room, dressed as a bailiff. But the adults didn't notice my presence at all. They had no idea. Can you imagine it, Iris? Could you credit it? Hmm, I'm not sure really. I beg your pardon? Mm, pardon? I'm sorry, Hurley, but just don't have the weighty presence you seem to think you have. In fact, you really ought to be careful about that. It's gonna land you in trouble one day. I'll be careful. Ouch. Anyways, such a shame. I was, <laughs> I was so hoping to throw a party for Jenny tonight. But, you won't be able to come, will you? It don't look... It doesn't look like I'm going to be going anywhere for a while. You heard the judge, Patter. I got stuff to make amends for, apparently, all of them offenses. What was it again? Breaking and entering, taking the bog trotter stuff. Uh, what was it? A uh, lug. What was it in lug? Blah, blah, blah. I can't even fucking... I... 
I can't read no more. Yes, I think you'll find that basically being a pickpocket is a main offense. But diving at, but diving at an office, it's a job, ain't it? I don't think so. Still, it's got me thinking all this. Maybe I should start looking for another line of work. I mean, you didn't start off as a lawyer, did you, Otto? Well, no. But I was never a pickpocket. Well, anyways, I reckon I can make a change. I'm gonna do something for all, for all them lots like me, for the slums. Something that makes a difference, Rome. That's a wonderful idea, Jenny. I'm sure you can do it. What are you laughing at? What is it? Nothing. Miss Gina Lestrade? The prison carriage has arrived, ma'am. Come with, come with me to the rear gate at once. Right. Well, looks like I'm off then. Yes. Goodbye, Gina. And good luck. Um, Odo? Yes? What the fuck? What are you doing? Why? Wh what was that for? I, uh, I don't know. I mean, I don't know what to say, so. Ah, indeed. Perhaps the situation calls for a phase hitherto missing from your vocabulary, Mr. Shot. Huh? Eh? On occasion such as this, I would recommend a simple thank you. Oh. Oh, yes. It's a good advice, Jenny. Right. I see. Well. Thanks, Otto. Thank you for everything you've done. Thanks for believing in me. Not at all. In fact, that should be my line. Thank you, Gina. Are we done? Damn it! It's still going! It won't stop. Well, there she goes. I wonder if I'll ever see her again. Well, well. Quite the abom rise the uh, abominable pig purse. I can't read no more. Oh, I nearly forgot. I brought the paper outside. It's a special edition, and the trial's all over the front page. Pickpockets innocent proven. Isn't it wonderful? You should have shown it to Gina, Iris. She would have been thrilled. Oh no, how silly of me. Uh, but anyways, would you like the good news or the bad news? Hmm, not again. Well, what do you say, Runo? Early? As usual, I think I'd rather get the bad news out the way first. Absolutely not. I have no intention of listening to anything but good news. <sighs> and there you have it. How people answer the question says a lot about them, doesn't it? Let's not go there. Alright then. Maybe let's start with the good news this time. The rain has finally stopped. I can see clearly now the rain is gone. <laughs> it was a record level of rainfall, apparently. Nice. Well, that's good news indeed. We can journey back to the great and greater comfort. Then what's the bad news? All right then, what's the bad? The huge storm has left the seas very choppy. Uh-oh. The channel in particular is awful, so selling out selling out of the Dover has been delayed by a day or two. Wait. Dover, Dover, Dover. You know what I mean, Dover. That's right. We head to the station immediately. We may still have time to wave Susie off. But, 
There won't be a train, surely. We wouldn't be that lucky. Who don't you think I am, Mr. Narahodo? Mr. Shlums? I rushed to Victoria Station earlier and made arrangements for a special express. If we hurry now, we shall be there in time for dinner. And I know of a fine restaurant that serves the most delicious baked soul. I don't... <laughs> the Great Detective does it again. Indeed he does. I happen to be aware of a number of rail transport di uh, dictator foibles. D director foibles? I'm sorry. Dictator. <laughs> director foibles? What? I really made my knowledge of them known, known to the man. And he happily laid on <laughs> laid on a locomotive. Mentary. Just an idea. But it might be wise to stop manipulating people that way. What are you waiting for then? To London, Victoria. That took somewhat longer than I anticipated. Susie Bus must be about to leave now. Mrs. Otto, where are you? Over there, look! <laughs> like Scooby fucking do. Where are you? Over here! What are you doing? Wait, Mr. Sato, what the hell are you doing? Mr. Narahodo, what are you doing here? We came to see you as soon as we could after the trial, I mean. We heard that sailings were being delayed due to the bad weather, you see? Oh, I... I see. Then... Then tell me, how did Gina's trial go? Oh, it went well. She was acquitted. But she's in jail? That's wonderful. Really wonderful news. The book you were about to throw into the sea. It was your encyclopedia of British law, wasn't it? Oh dear. I was hoping you hadn't seen that. I'm not worthy of practicing law in any way now. So, I was saying my final farewell. What are you saying about a law? You, Sasato san. Would it be correct in assuming it's because of the peephole, Mr. Sasato san? I deliberately altered the scene of a crime. And then I tried to hide the fact. What I did is utterly unforgivable. That reminds me. How did you even come to have this, Susie? Were, were you literally just carrying it with you? On the evening of the incident, Mr. Slums had invented Gina had invited Gina to dinner, if you remember. Oh yes, I had a wonderful time. Well, Gina gave me a little introductory lesson. Let's see, uh, didn't she? To the art of pickpocketing, I mean. Oh, and that was much fun. I stole Runo's armband. Oh yes, please, don't do that again, Iris. The band's very important to me. Well, if it's so important, you should pay more attention to it. You didn't notice it for ages. Oh, <laughs> on a whim, I thought it'd be fun to see if I could take the cat, the cat flap -o -matic. So I put it up my sleeve. Really? And then I rather forgot about it until I found myself- How small is it? How big are your sleeves? <laughs> until I found myself at Mr. Winniebank's shop with it later that night. I see. And then... Mr. Slums! Leave me, Narahodo. Right. After Mr. Narahodo left the shop, I started to think the door was was uh, started to play. I started to think that door was starting to play on my mind. The storm door, you mean? Yes, 
As Yuna was anywhere in the shop, I realized it could be only it can only be behind the door. And at the moment, the little device that I had up my sleeve sprang to mind. I was so worried about Gina, I simply had to know. So you used the cat flap matic to make the peephole in the door. As captured in the photographic print of the shop by one of Hur Hurley's red-handed recorders. Indeed, it was the first importance that that point. Precisely when the people was made, that information would prove to be Mr. Naruto's greatest weapon. Though, naturally, without proof, it would have amounted to nothing. But when I looked through the hole in the door, the sight of my eyes made my blood run cold. Thoughts started running through my mind. I remember that the trial two months earlier, the trial of Magnus McGilded. I thought about how he had manipulated the evidence and arranged false testimony to him and secure his freedom. It made the British justice system feel very dark and sinister to me. And then, a terrible thought occurred to me. What if... What if some wicked criminal was planning to do the same thing now? Because from the appearance of the crime scene, it looked exactly as though Gina had shot Mr. Windybank. Even though I was sure she would never had done such a thing, you were worried that the true culprit would try and do was trying to frame her for a crime. I'm trying to frame her for the crime. I'm sorry. I'm 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 very sleep deprived right now. And that's right. But then I realized it would be very difficult for anyone to give false testimony in that case. What do you mean? Well, the crime appeared to have happened behind the door of the locked room. For someone to claim for someone to claim falsely to have witnessed it there, uh, there would have to be a way to see beyond the door. Mm -hmm. So which <laughs> for which a peephole would be would be the very thing. Alright. Listen. Von Zyke's out here playing playing fucking 3D chess. I'm out here playing 5D chess. But Mikotaba's out here on some 10D chess type shit. I don't know what she's doing. <laughs> she's in her own fucking league. Only the people I had made was actually there until after the crime scene had been committed. After the crime scene. After the crime had been committed, of course. And the criminal would know. Uh, and the criminal would know that, so it wouldn't make any difference. But the possibility of rather ingenious trap was there, was it not? A trap? Is that why she did it? So... Is that why you kept it a secret, Susie? You never mentioned that. You never mentioned that you made the peephole to anyone, not even the police. I know. And I knew I had time. <laughs> uh, I knew I. Fuck, I can't read no more. I know, and I knew at the time what I was doing was wrong. A criminal offense, even. That's why I decided to confide in Mr. Sloan's. Mr. Narahoda was completely back to a corner. With the, other with the other possible means of escape. The truth about the people could save him. That was my plan. She really does think of everything. But, but then, why didn't you just tell me everything before the trial began? My dear fellow, you're not thinking straight away. If she had done that, it would have rendered you a uh, com, a uh, com, fuck. Mm. Complicit, I can't say the word. The whole escapade. You could have been disbarred if you had been seen to have knowingly tampered with the crime scene. So Mr. Sato decided to shoulder the burden of responsibility alone. For your sake, and Miss Lestrade's. Mr. Sato? The truth is, when it happened, I... I did it because... I lost a little of my faith in the law. Oh. I was worried that the right person would be con- that the- fuck. I was worried that the right person wouldn't be convicted for the crime. But the moment I allowed myself to think like that, is the moment I lost my right to call myself a judicial assistant. 
Oh shit, wrong button. I'm sorry. My finger slipped. I'm sorry, my finger slipped. What you did is incomparable to what he did. Graydon is the one who lied to the wit on the witness stand, using the peephole as a way to implicate Gina. And besides, if the peephole's inconsistency hadn't existed, I'm not at all sure that she would have been acquitted in the end. Mrs. Otto, what you did saved Gina's life. Well, with your kind words, Mr. Natahodo, you saved me too. For my regrets. Well, we must all be thankful that Miss Lestrade's freedom has been assured. Yeah, exactly. Although, some of the loose ends in the trial will continue to play on in my mind, I'm sure. But the revelation that the music box does contain secret messages, <laughs> Mr. Nadahoro. What a triumph to work that out. I'm full of admiration. Well, actually, that argument wasn't quite as compelling as I thought it was. Well, it wasn't. There was a communication officer amongst the jury members, you see. A telegraph operator. And she said that the majority of the sounds on the disc was just meaningless tones. As one, who expect, as one would expect. After all, we are talking about secret government communications. She probably fucking lied. <laughs> no doubt they were written in cipher to avoid being readily understood should they have been in intercepted. In cipher? I see. So then, we can never have hope to understand the message anyways. Nonsense, my dear fellow. It's quite a zero-pipe problem, I assure you. A. So, GI. What? Well, that can't be a real word, can it? Not funny. Wait, what the fuck did you did you say, Asogi? Asogi. Why is that? Asogi, who the hell? That's not... That's not Cosmos, is it? No. Well, that can't be a real word, can it? How funny. Iris, what did you just say? Oh, uh, I just said Asogi. Isn't that Cosmos' name? Does that word mean something to you? It means something. Asogi. That's the name of my best friend. What? But how? How did you know that name, Iris? I wrote it down during the trial before, when the message was playing on the music box. She so transcribed it on the fly? Damn, you're a genius. I thought the message probably wouldn't be written out in plain Morse code, so I tried various ways of interpreting it. But whatever I tried, the word just didn't make sense. That's it. In English, at least. Oh. It suddenly occurred to me, you see. There's more than one Morse code, not just the English variety. Various countries around the world have altered and added a Morse code to use their, to use their own language. I don't believe it. Are you saying... That's right. I've only actually seen a chart of Japanese Morse code once before. But I think it's based on the... I, fuck. On the Iroha program? Is it? Hmm. You mean to say that in Japanese Morse code, the message says Asogi? Yes, I think so. Sorry, but I don't really remember all the Japanese Morse code. Iris, would you let me see that? Mrs. Sato, do you know? You know Japanese Morse code? Yes, I spent some time studying it. Because I'm quite sure Morse code will become ever more important in international communications. <laughs> then I recommend, my dear madam, that you focus your efforts on the English version. But, that as it may, I will show me the message, please. Of course.
What do you got, Sasato? What could this possibly mean? Whatever it is, the long sequence supposed to, of the long wow. <clears throat> Whatever is in that long sequence of supposedly meaningless dots and dashes. It made the color drain from Susano-san's face. There's no doubt that this message is written in Japanese Morse code. So the British Empire has been using Japanese for its secret communications? I don't understand the reason why, but... The messages appear to be a list of four people's names. Four names. The first... K. Asogi. Kazuma. Why was his name on the disc? The second... A. Shin. Shin. I don't recognize that name. The third... T. Girigusan. I think that's how you say that. Uh, Gregson? Tobias. Hmm. Gregusan. <laughs> that's how they fucking wrote it? Really? Like that? Hmm. Ah, uh, it would seem Tobias Gregson is the third name on the list. And what, what's his name doing in the top secret government communications? And the last name? Tell me. What's the matter, Mrs. Sato? It's just so strange. So unexpected. Oh, what is it, Sudi? Oh, Sudi. <laughs> what the hell did I just call her that for? Hmm. Don't keep us in suspense. The last name is Jay Wilson. Is this a fucking hit list? What? Wilson. John H. Wilson. You mean... Dad? It says only Jay Wilson, so I'm afraid it can't. I can't be sure. Then, after the four names, it reads, if I translate it from the Japanese, that it's all four. And that's the end of the message. Or rather, the end of what you noted down, Iris. I think we just met a hit list. Ah, oh, shit. That's not good. Just can't believe it. Who would ever thought that those discs contained Japanese Morse code? Not to mention a strange list of disturbingly familiar names. Hmm. It would appear that this peculiar message is a communication of some kind between Great Britain and Empire of Japan. So, that could be in Japan then. Where Susie and Runo come from? Oh, well. Hmm, no. It's not very likely, is it? I mean, there are thousands of people with the surname Wilson, and there's just a lot of J names amongst them. Professor John H. Wilson, visiting professor of medicine at the Imperial Yume University. Imperial? Did I just say that? My bad. Imperial. <laughs> but, we can't tell Iris about that now. We just can't. This is so strange. Somehow, in solving the case of Mr. Winniebank's murder today, I feel like I rolled back a boulder on the month of a very dark cave. Wait, what? I rolled back the boulder of a m at the mouth of a very dark cave. I am I am losing my mind here. I do wonder if perhaps it's a dark cave that we shouldn't go wandering inside. Oh dear, the ship's going to set sail soon. Yes, seems so. I'll sail on this. I'll sail on that steamship first. To the, wow, I'll sail on that steamship first to the port of of Dunkirk in France. I can't fucking read no more. Then I'll change it to a larger passenger vessel bound for Japan. You're really going, then, Susie. We wish you a safe passage, Mrs. Otto. Thank you so much. I wish all of you the very best. Mr. Sato. 
I had hoped to have you always at my side to guide me and support me. Mr. Narahoto, please, come back soon. As far as I'm concerned, you really are the very best judicial assistant in the world. I'm quite sure. I'll be back before you know it. Really, Susie? Oh, and don't forget, Iris. I made you a promise I've yet to fulfill. A promise. About your manuscript. Oh. Oh, yes. The Hound of the Baskervilles. Well, I'll be waiting for you then, Susie. Promise is a promise. Definitely. Mr. Narahoto? Yes? Do you remember the first time we met? Oh, you mean when you bodied me? <laughs> yes, of course. On the SS Bureau, when I was dragged out from the wardrobe, still half asleep. You idiot. The first time you met was back in Japan, stupid. If I remember rightly, you threw me halfway across the cabin with the Sasato takedown. You know very well what I'm talking about after that. It's strange, but being thrown together, as we were in the first as we were in the first case, I somehow felt straight away that you were the perfect person to continue Kazuma's great legacy. Mrs. Sato. And my instincts were right. I really want to believe. No. I'm sure that. I'll be back soon. Farewell until then. Somehow we seem to have come to the end of the adventures of Ryunosuke Naruhodo. Or the first volume, at least. Looking back now, it feels as though fate has led me on this journey. Fate led me to becoming a lawyer, to traveling halfway around the world, to meeting the great detective. I'm sure there'll be trials and tribulations ahead. Of course there will. But whatever happens, I know I'll be able to turn my fortunes around. After all, I have the greatest friends in the world on my side. Oh my fucking god, what more do you want from me? Oh yes, Mr. Narahoto. Fuck. Yes, Mr. Sloans? I have some rather awkward news. I'm pregnant. <laughs> the railway company has decided to sue over the special express train, apparently. What? It's caused so much commotion on the line, all the other trains have to wait on the station. But really, we would never have made it to Dover in, other <laughs> in time otherwise. Anyways, I'll explain everything and how it was all your fault. Are you fucking... what? I believe a formal complaint should be delivered to your office tomorrow. But not to worry, my dear fellow. According to Mrs. Sato, love defending yourself in court. Huh? It's alright, I'm perfectly happy to testify. He really didn't look like the sort of man who'd do something so outrageous. See? You guys are evil. Um, Mr. Slums? Yes? A word, if you don't mind. Why, certainly. Any word you like. Bellow it out, my dear fellow. Oh yes, I love Renault's words, and I know just the one he'll use here. 
Then, I really must say... Objection. All right. Woo! Credits are playing. No more reedy reads. Awesome. Great. Okay. So, finally. Oh, when the fuck? How long has it been since I started this playthrough? Oh, in the following weeks, hundreds of music boxes arrived. The Baker Street's all over. Uh, something's afoot. Though transpired, I ordered them all myself. So I advertised and sell with used by Mr. Slums to okay, solve the important call or whatever. Money earned, counseling, that's where it pays, paying to the comes. Okay. Okay. So music boxes got. I forgot that they have like a where are they now type thing going on after, after all of this stuff. Ah, uh, haven't slept in the wink. The manuscript's due tomorrow now. When I'm this busy, Hurley usually cooks me breakfast. Well, cooks is an overstatement. For some dry toast and an in, in instant, instant cart, whatever, instant coffee. Do love Miss Susie's breakfasts, okay? Witness, <laughs> ouchie. Your testimony is riddled with contradictions. Exactly, really do, okay talking about these fucking corn i forgot about this man and his fucking child dude like the first honestly the first half of this game besides like the verdict of like this trial that happened uh the first trial that happened like the practice trial or whatever you know that lady getting off scot-free with the misdemeanor uh honestly most of it was forgettable i remember the stuff on the ship that was pretty fun investigating and stuff but like but like the first trial uh, even, even the second trial. Done nothing wrong. All I did was get Waikai Offspring Refuge. Oh, he brought kittens with him. That's cool, but no pets are supposed to be allowed. Okay. Um. God, I'm trying to remember what the first trial was after that. After, like, the first time we came across Shlomes. Oh, the first trial was, uh, McGilded stuff. Yeah. Fucking dream of the world governed by. Okay, well, I'm not gonna be reading all these right now. <laughs> Just, I'm so tired. Um, yeah, but McGilded's trial, like that one, just, dude. I'm not sure if it, if it like came off, like if it came off like that while I was doing it right on the stream. But, dude, I was so bored during that whole entire fucking that whole entire case until like the ending right it was just so fucking boring to me i'm not gonna lie and you know take that like taking that and ju just that alone and comparing it to like the other ace attorney games that i have played thus far on this channel um you know with the first with the you know with trials and tribulations justice for all in the first game you know ace attorney Right, Phoenix Wright is turning. Like, right off the bat, I'm just gonna have to say it right now. In terms of comparing all those with this game, right? It is. The first game of Ace Attorney is, at this point, my least favorite, I would have to say. But that doesn't mean it's bad. It's just that it starts off kind of slow, like a little too slow for me. Right, and of course, it all pays off in the end, I guess, but even then, like, the last trial we did, A, it went on for way too fucking long. But I mean, that's usually par for the course when it comes to Phoenix, right, anyways. But like, I don't know, man, I'm not sure if anything can be, um, I honestly do like these two right here, uh, Patricia and Royley. I honestly did like these two, they're pretty cool. Um. To be honest, my favorite case in this fucking, uh, in this game was with these guys, right? That one just felt, that one just felt nice. I feel like that one should have been the fucking first case or some bullshit, you know? But, um, at least the first case when you got in, uh, what you call it? In, uh, you know what I mean, in, in London. Uh, yeah, but, like, I don't, like, oh shit, what's Gina doing? Looks like I'm gonna be doing time for a bit now. 
But Iris comes every day for, for a natter, so it's not too boring. She's always going on about uh, them cases, which loans. Okay. Criminal investigations are kind of interesting when you get into them. Of course they are. I can't wait. Don't you fall asleep. I can't wait for Gina to come back. I hope she comes back. I want I want more. I want more Gina. <laughs> That's what I want. Uh, the characters in this game, honestly, yeah, even the first trial, right? With the fucking... With, when I was my upbringing, chose life, sophisticated crime, but regrets, please. What the fuck? Why are they in the cell together? Shouldn't he be, like, on death row? He committed treason. I love how I said I wasn't gonna read... <laughs> the three Musco Watsons. Okay. Wait. Isn't he not... Is he not serving time for treason? He's having fun in jail. What a dickhead. <laughs> okay, whatever. Um... Yeah, but... I don't think anything so far is... I honestly... It's gonna be really hard. Trial number four. I mean, which... Is it for number four? Or act number four or whatever. I gotta read this. I'm sorry, Susato. This past month, such painful goodbyes and wonderful encounters. I come to realize that that's what life is about. Not a san Promise. Your assistance will return to you one day. Okay. But for now, I leave you with many memories. And heartfelt wish. That life will treat you well. Sorry, Shisato, you gotta read it, right? Oh, look at that. I hate Ace Attorney because that makes me want to play more Ace Attorney. You know what I mean? All right. But. Huh. We have more fucking credits. Are you? Oh, we're doing the anime walk along and people are going to join in down memory lane. All right, cool. Um, Dude, he didn't he didn't last that long. Right. I mean, neither did. Uh, I was about to call her Lisa Lisa. <laughs> Either did uh, either did uh, what you call it? Uh, Mia, she didn't last that long either, right? <laughs> so what the fuck? But yeah, um, if I'm gonna take this and compare it to like the other Ace Attorney games that I played that I played so far, this one's my least favorite. But apparently, people say it's better overall as a whole. You know, when you when you compare this with the second one, right? But even then, to say that, oh, it's better when you play two games, like, it's kind of hard, right? You know, it's kind of hard for that big old sale, right? But, uh, are you going to join in the walk, Mikotoba? Come on, join us. Walk with us. Okay, never mind. Okay, I'll just be here. Um, yeah, but I'm, I'm excited to see what they do. I, first of all just I don't know what happened between this game and the last one right but someone said let's use bigger words <laughs> and, it, and they're scary big words um that and just can we tone down with the whole accents for these characters I get it right oh and he oh we leave him behind Aww. and then we're on our own for that and then I guess Mikotoba joins us Right? Damn. I wanna know what happened to, uh, what's her name? I forgot her name already. Damn. <laughs> I really don't have much to say about this. the sword i'm sorry i'm like really like enthralled by this all right this little walk along here yeah but if you're gonna if you're if you're thinking of getting into fucking ace attorney this should may like this is my 
this is like my fourth game playing in the series, maybe you should probably play one of the 3DS ones first. I'm not sure. I can't really give, you know, I really can't say anything about that because I haven't played it, so I don't know. I have heard that there is one of the games on the 3DS that a lot of people just don't like and apparently they think it's like really, 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 really boring. But, um, I don't know, man. Can it really be more boring than this? Right? Not, not this, but like the first half of this, right? It doesn't really, it doesn't really speed up until after. And it just, I don't know. Right? Even the characters, for the most part, aren't that interesting. Like, for me, right? I mean, don't get me wrong. I love, I love Mikotoba. I love, I love the main, I love the main group, right? You know? I love Lestrade. She's cool. I love Patricia and Royley. Gregson's all right. Um, I forgot this man's name that we're walking past right now with his fucking cat. Right? He's cool. I mean, most characters are just kind of cool, but they don't like, they don't stick with you. You know what I mean? Like, like I said, you know, you play the, you play the, you know, you play the first three games and it's like, name care. If I were to walk up to you and go like, hey man, name some characters from Phoenix, right? Like, of course you're gonna name the main ones, like, you know, Phoenix, Maya, Pearl, Mia, fucking Edgeworth, Gumshoe, right? But then you're gonna start naming other motherfuckers that stick to your mind. You're like, Wendy Oldbag, she's been around for a while. Larry, Larry Butts, he's a fucking goofball. A lot of heart, she's cool as shit. <laughs> right? Will Powers, right? Fucking... Who else names I can just pull out of a hat right now, right? Like you're gonna bring up, uh, what's his name? Maximus or whatever the hell. Fucking the Magician and stuff like that. And the fucking Ventriloquist and like, maybe the fucking Clown. <laughs> And you're gonna bring up fucking, you know, Francesca and all of them, right? But, you know, I can just keep going down the list, right? Because they're so rememberable, right? They're, you know, they're rememberable to me. They have big, they have, you know, big personalities. But this one, it's like only a handful of characters have personality. Like, even Chief Lord Justice, or whatever the fuck his name is, I don't even remember what, what his name what is his name? Lion Strongheart? Leon Strongheart, maybe? I'm not sure. I really, like... Like... Uh, like, he didn't stick out at all. <laughs> to me. Ooh. That's a nice picture. I like that. Right? But, who knows? Maybe the next game will be better. But that won't be until a while, right? Like, I wish I, I wish I, I had, like, more to say about this game, but I kind of just don't, <laughs> right? The only thing I can say is that, did I enjoy doing it? Yes, I did. I am excited for the next game because I heard the next game is better because it builds off the first game, which, what a sequel should always do. Build off the first and make it better, right? So, when that happens, you know, Hope I can stomach sitting here and just reading forever and ever. Maybe I'll be better at reading by then. Probably not. Most likely not. Um, yeah. But as for Ace Attorney right now, we're going to let it sit for a bit. These are long ass games, dude. <laughs> and I need to play something different on the stream that just... I don't know, that, that kind of just gives my voice a bit of a break, I guess? Something that I don't have to talk 100% of the time? <laughs> I don't know what I want to stream, All right, next, because I am currently looking at, like, the calendar and stuff, and I would really like to get started with, uh, you know, I want to get started towards, like, more horror stuff, or, like, Halloween or whatever, because last year, I wanted to do, I wanted to do like a good number of games, good number of like horror titles or whatever, but I just, I guess I just didn't have the chance to, right? Because most of it was taken up by Corpse Party, right? So I don't know what I'm going to do next. Maybe, 
maybe I'll find like one more game to play before we start doing horror stuff, right? And getting ready for like spooky time. Um, because I like doing spooky time early. Because, you know, we get to play a lot of spooky things. And also because my stream times are like, I only stream mainly like two times a week. So, <laughs> you know, it works out easier for me that way. But as of right now, I don't know what the next game is going to be. I'll look at the schedule, right? I remember I did say that I do want to finish up some older playthroughs that I was that I was streaming like um like folklore and conception and Kena Bridge of Spirits and stuff like that. Uh I think I'm going to hold off on them t for now mainly because Conception, like, we again, Conception's kind of like a visual novel, right? There's a lot of fucking, you know, sh a lot of story going on in there, so just give that one a break, right? I can't, I can't hop straight into visual novel after visual novel. I just fucking can't. Um, and, like, folklore, it's fun, but, you know, I'm just not ready to go back to it. And the same thing with Kina, I mean... It's fun, and I do like it, but it's one of those games where, like, I I just kind of chill out too much that I barely commentate on it. <laughs> so, like, I gotta figure out how to fucking do that. Um, but I don't know. Ooh, I got some games in my mind right now. Yeah, I got some games in my mind right now that I think I can fuck around with. Yeah, 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 okay, okay, okay. Um, but that's gonna be it for Phoenix right Phoenix right fuck. It's gonna be for uh, it for Great Ace Attorney. Once we come back to this, I'm I'm not gonna make any promises. I'm not gonna make any promises. But I want to say after October, I probably want to come back to this honestly, because I just really do. I honestly really do want to continue playing this. And of course, whenever I play Ace Attorney games, it's all blind. I don't know what the fuck's going on. It's my first time playing these. Um. Oh my god, it's been like se I've been streaming for fucking seven hours. Holy shit. Wow. Um, so, here's what's gonna happen. First of all, <laughs> you know, this is the end of the stream. Over at the YouTube channel, currently going up on the YouTube channel is, you know, I'm gonna be putting, of course, I'm gonna be putting these videos up now because since the playthrough is completely done, thank God. Um, hopefully, I didn't miss any VODs for this or anything like that. So, Ace Attorney is going to be going up, of course, right? Uh, so keep an eye out for that. This is mainly for people watching on Twitch. If you want to watch the VODs on YouTube within like the next week or so, the VODs are going to start going up. I'm going to start, you know, uploading more on YouTube. Um, the Ratchet and Clank stuff went up, right? Rift Apart. You can watch that whole entire playthrough on YouTube. All the stream, uh, you know, the three streams are there for that. Uh, Simulacra, if you like, like, indie horror, like, text, like, choose your own adventure type shit fucking there's that that's on the youtube channel right now like those streams are up there and it seems like people like it um and also what's still going up is the persona 4 golden streams so if you really like persona you can check that out right there is there's a lot of parts it is a long playthrough um but it was one of my better stream series that I did. A lot of people seem to really like it and show up for it. So, you know, maybe you'll like it too. <laughs> right. And then, of course, for the Pokemon Marathon stuff right now, Hey You Pikachu is going up, right? And once we're done with Hey You Pikachu, we're going to be heading right into the next game that was released. And I think that's Pokemon Snap. Don't, don't, don't fucking, don't quote me on that, right? But... You know, if you care about Pokemon, if you like Pokemon, you know, just in general, go check out that marathon. Pokemon Red and Blue playthrough is done, completely done. Had a had a little spotlight for Pokemon Pocket Stadium, the Japanese only game, and then you know, Hey You Pikachu, that's going up right now. Like later today, I'm gonna upload more parts for that. And that's pretty much what's going on on YouTube right now. So if you're interested in any of that, right, please give it a check, you know. If you're watching this on YouTube and you like what you see, please leave a like. It really fucking helps out a lot. And leave a comment, you know, that helps out even more, right? You got any fucking questions or anything or you want to you wanna say how stupid I am for reading? <laughs> or, if you really, or if you just really enjoyed the playthrough, let me know, please. The feedback is actually really appreciated. 
And, you know, I guess if, if you're not subscribed, please subscribe, click the bell, get notifications. If you're on, uh, if you're watching this on Twitch, follow me. If you really want to support me, um, you can subscribe to me on Twitch, you know, tier one, right? And, uh, if you have Amazon Prime or Twitch Prime or whatever, you get a free Prime sub, so you can hand that over to anybody you want, right? Whether it's me, whether it's someone else that you really appreciate, just please don't, just, whether it's me or not, just don't sit on that fucking Prime sub, please, because you can really make a difference for somebody, so, you know, go ahead and do that, right? It's no additional cost to you. That's only if you have Twitch Prime and Amazon Prime or whatever the hell it is, you know? And then, uh, you know, in the description below, you can see right there on the screen is it's my Twitter. That's my Twitter handle. If you want to at me or something, that's what you do it at. If you want to send any like, any like um, fan art or fucking, or like, message me and say that I'm a, that I'm shit at video games. I guess <laughs> I don't know. You can do that there, right? And people have made use of that, which I'm greatly appreciated towards. You know, and I'll try my best to get back at you, right, as quick as possible. Um. But if I just don't do it, please don't take it the wrong way, right? You know, don't take it the wrong way. I may have just not noticed. Uh, and I think that's everything I want to say for social medias and all that bullshit. All right. So, yeah, it's pretty much it for Ace Attorney. Oh, my fucking God. I am going to need to go to sleep, have something to eat. I don't know. Next time we come back to the stream, it's on the stream schedule. By the time we come back, I probably will have something planned for the next playthrough. But as of right now, there's nothing planned. I'm just happy that this game is done. <laughs> and I can put this under my belt as another one bites the dust, you know? So, as always, I want to say thank you guys for watching. And I will see you in the next video. Stay happy, stay healthy, and take care. Take off.